we're going to have you chair it. We'll help you, but get your team. Because then she can get her comfortable friends that she's comfortable with. Instead of, uh, you know, it's the round peg in a square hole. It doesn't, you know. So why are we doing this instead of this? And family is that. The ones that work together thrive together. So how many members in here today, this is your first time at an ABC Plus? Hopefully. Hold on. Hold on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for coming. So, less than one year as a member. Less than two years. Less than five years? Is there anybody over ten? You are. Ten. Just trying to get a feel for the room, see where we're going. <laughs> so, you know, we have, um, in our, we have our current organization, I mentioned national. Uh, Jane is our national executive committee woman. She actually represents the Department of Florida on the national level. Um, we have our national organization. From there, we have 52 departments. Why do we call them departments? Because of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. And Washington, D.C. They're not a state. Okay, so well, then how come it says state president on the car? Because people don't know what the parking means. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm sure it's like. When we're driving down the road and we're in our nice little auxiliary vehicle, we want them to know what it means. Um, so, yes, come on in there. Hey. Hey. All right, so we've got our national organization. We have 52 departments within the Department of Florida. We have how many districts? 16. Well, we actually go to number 17. We're missing number 10. And we're missing number 10 because 10 was down in the Miami area. And many years ago, when World War II and all the, all the snowbirds retired to Florida, they went down south. Well, as they started passing, the Legion, and again, Jay mentioned, that's our parent, all right, the Legion decided they were going to merge two districts together. So they eliminated number 10. As a family, we follow suit with the Legion. We are a family in every sense of the word. So we eliminated number 10. So we have 16 districts. We go to number 17, there's no 10th district. Okay? We have 207 units in the Department of Florida. And currently, we are number one in the nation in membership. So we are actually the second largest department in the nation. Last year, we surpassed Illinois, uh, Chicago, Illinois area, and uh, we're actually number two. Pennsylvania is number one, largest department. So, just a little bit of facts, just to kind of get you going. We have Alberta, uh, our PR lady, a uh, wealth of just amazing. I said I'll never run for national public relations because nobody could do a better job than her. Um, yeah. So, of knowledge out there. National has a website, alafordveterans.org. There's ALA Academy on there. There's learning classes, webinars, self-paced training. Um, all free to our members. All you got to do is register. You need your membership card, they'll give you a password, and you're on the national website. All right? Uh, we also have a department website, ALAFL.org. Uh, also, wealth of knowledge and information. Our Friday reports and membership. Our newsletters, our monthly newsletters are on there. All the programs, and uh, this year they're calling them PEP, Program Engagement Plans, um, to talk about all our programs. So make sure everybody has those websites. ALA for veterans.org and ALAFL.org. Let's see where else we want to go here. And how easy is that to do training online? I mean, really, self paced. Oh, yeah. Self paced, stop, go do what you got to do. We're all busy. Whether, how many still work? Wow. Yeah. Even if you're retired, you, that doesn't mean you have nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> we're ladies. We're ladies. There's always something to do.
do. Woman's work is never done. So how easy that you can do some days, not go back to it. Yeah, you did, and it even saves progress. So it isn't like you have to leave it all open. You know, say something happened and you just had to go. You can close it and saves your progress. So that's nice. So you can come back to it tomorrow or the next day. So we just purchased these beautiful calendars. So the first thing I asked, it says the district. So the first thing I asked, I said, who's the sponsor in the unit? 129. That's right. So we have 16 districts. 16 districts. But districts are not chartered, only the units. So they cannot hold fundraisers. It has to be sponsored by a unit. So great job, ladies. Love them. $15. Support ADF. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. We got plenty. So there's a couple of things you really wanted us to talk about, and I don't really want to get too deep into it, because um, we do have a lot of new members. But um, as I said, units are the charter. Units. They have the 990s, the incorporations, your um, solicitation license. District, districts do not. So as I said, there's really no fundraising on the district part. As a whole, you can come together as a district and you can have fundraisers, but it's always got to have a sponsoring unit or host. Uh, a lot of the um, districts will hold picnics for Boys and Girls State buses or luncheons or events to raise money for the buses. Um, they come together as a family. But again, there always has to be a sponsoring unit. Uh, Legion says, no, we can do it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. They're the veterans. Let them do what they want. That's totally up to them. We are chartered because of them. And without them, we wouldn't even be here. We are a 501c19. They are the three. Okay. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Thank you. We have our own EIN numbers. Mm -hmm. We can or cannot be tax exempt. It's really up to your unit. Why wouldn't you want to be? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, with but, that being said, but in turn, you're going to have your own. That doesn't mean, well, we have the post 283. No, no you have unit 283 EIN number. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should be operating. And as I said, we're tax exempt. We are a non-profit, which means we should not be having this much money we've made and we're keeping it in our bank accounts. We're a non-profit organization. So how much money should we keep in our bank accounts? Does everybody do a budget in your unit? Okay, at least one year with a budget. Because look what happened during COVID. We didn't really operate, but we still had expenses. We still had obligations. Our quotas. So it's always a good idea to keep at least one year's budget in reserve. But anything more than that, you really should not be showing a profit. We are a non-profit organization. Okay. Any questions on that? I know I'm kind of like I said, just diving into it, but uh, we had some questions that we they wanted to answer. Everybody okay with all of that? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, it's on the district level. Yes. As district secretary. How long do I keep records? Everything's been passed to me. Do we keep it for a year? Because there's no treasurer's report or anything. So how long are we required to keep those records? All right, the treasurer's report would actually be your district president at your district constitutional conference. Your district president can assess a fee up to $20 for every unit to help pay for programs and printing and uh, you know mailings and that kind of stuff. So the district president will actually give her report at the DCC, your district constitutional conference. Um, it's really up to the district if you want to keep passing this stuff around, uh, back and forth. You are not incorporated, you are not chartered, so there really is no retention. Okay. However, like I said, we keep passing it because it's history. Okay. And maybe, maybe a good, I know it's a project because it depends on how long you have, but maybe scan it to a to a okay. uh, thumb drive. That's a good idea. And then yeah. and then the district has a thumb drive or something to make it electronic just to make it easier. Thank you. I'm gonna note on what Jane um, two eighty three is, is in the process of on April. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we purchased two hard drives, external hard drives, which are kept in the safe. At the district level you can have the 
sponsoring tools put that in their site, but you can scan everything in. That way you're not bringing a box to the next person. You're just giving them a hard drive. And if you get that there's terabytes, they're only like 64 bucks. They're not expensive, okay. and they're really easy to use. They also have scanners on the market, or ours was donated to us. It feeds multiple papers. It takes about two minutes to scan in a mm -hmm. stack that day. Um, but it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a, a nice not to have all that paper hanging around. Can I, can I jump with what she said? So we have those younger members that we really want to come in. Maybe that younger member is the one that goes, I'll sit there and put all that stuff on you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. She said, so don't make her do juniors. <laughs> don't make her do juniors or push her to do something else when that's her niche right there. That's my niche. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Nope. So um, we are the American Legion Auxiliary. We were founded in 1919 by the American Legion. We are not the women's auxiliary, and now we all know that we are welcoming male spouses. That's the only male we welcome. Why? No. Well, you know, my sister is in the military, so can my brother join? No. Are we only male spouses. Yeah. Are we going to ever going to allow fathers to join? So, years ago, before we allowed male spouses, <laughs> I've been teaching these classes for many years with Mary and I, and we used to say, it takes an act of Congress. And actually, it really does. Yeah, it actually does. Okay? But the Legion owns us. And if the Legion wants to let males in, we were at that national convention when they let those males in, whether we had a vote or not. <coughs> so it's really up to the Legion. Yeah. Right now, it is only male spouses. And by then, they had already had to go to Congress because at the same time they did the male spouse, then they did the Legion Act, remember? Yeah. Which were a triple A eligibility dates. Right. Mm -hmm. So they had to go to Congress and get approval for both changes. So it would be up to the National Legion. So the changes had to come into play together. Because if they did not get the Legion Act open and they let male spouses, we may tip the scale. We may have more members than the Legion. Yep. And that can never happen. <laughs> okay, so they had the Legion Act, and then they said, okay, these are happening together. All right, does that make sense to everyone? Okay, yeah. So that's if fine. we wanted that to change, or because we do have a lot of fathers that come and they don't have exactly. any military previous, and I mean, I hate being the one that's, I'm sorry. But, but we, so so, so do, we, do, we, do we go to our Legion folks and say, hey, what do we need to do? The, the, there, what, how the local it legion, it? it wouldn't be at. It no. would be the national organization. So what can you do for those fathers? Do you yeah. know what we call the person that helps us? We can record their money spent. We can record their hours, but they are not a member. Do not want to see well, yeah, we're all honorary <laughs> advocates. Okay. They're not an honorary advocate. They're not an honorary, but, but Kimmy, that brings up another point. I can be an honorary member, honorary life member. Okay, that's where the unit says, oh my gosh, Michelle, you have done so much for this unit, we're going to make you an honorary life member, and they're going to pay my dues as long as I'm a member of that unit. <coughs> but there is no such thing as an honorary member. They're advocates. Right. Okay. Okay. Do you have a question? Um, we're talking about fathers, correct? Yes. That means a father has an active duty Daughter. child. Or, 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 or a retired child. Retired. child. Retired. Okay, an active duty. So what are you talking about with the father? So actually the father really, can can the father join the American Legion? No, well, no. Because they're not. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just yeah, asking a question. Yeah. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's what I've run into time and time again, is they come and they don't have a grandfather or a father so they can but be a son. son. So where they can be a son, they're but, not a member themselves. But I understand. So we're having to say no. no okay, no. I understand that. But the other thing is, too, when fathers have come to me when I've been on bases mm -hmm. and all their other organizations, if that father's really interested in being involved in a military organization, there are so many other military organizations that are open to the fathers that the fathers can go through the Family Services Center on your bases, mm -hmm. or they could call the American Red Cross, or they could, uh, many, many things. So Absolutely. to me, if they're that interested in being involved with the military, 
I would ask them, I would send them another direction. No, I want them. No, I want them. No, 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 no. no. I want them. I'm so, uh, uh, before male spouses were eligible, um, there was a wonderful legionnaire, female veteran, um, at District 4, and she would talk to us all the time when you're going to let my husband in. He is in that kitchen cooking for us. Mm -hmm. He is lifting up those sodas for us. He is getting ice for us. And I handed her a coin. And it said, thank you for supporting the American Legion Auxiliary. I said, now you print out a certificate. And you honor him at your meeting. And you bring him in. And you thank him. And you get him an auxiliary shirt and say, hey, we want you to come in and be part of our meetings as a guest. Because you have great input. And you're the cook. And you're going to tell us what the menu is. Use them. They want to be here. Use them, but make them feel welcome. We have a nice And I get what you're saying, mm -hmm. but we want them because, like I said earlier, we can count their hours. Right. We can count their monies. Right. And we know why that tracking, if we do those impact numbers at the end of the year, on the unit level, all the way to district, to department to turn into nationals because the American Legion Auxiliary National Organization compiles it and they must give a report to the Legion because the Legion has to tell our government what they do, what the sons do, and what the auxiliary does. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. It's very important. Thanks. Plus it's another volunteer. You know, um, it was brought up on volunteers, you know, we have a lot of members. Uh, what did you mention? 500. And I'm not talking about this family here, but I'm going to use it as an example. 500, hey, we're going to do a meeting because we don't know all the members. Wonderful idea. Okay? But we have members that we're not tapping into because we're not looking to tap into them. So then I have units come to me and say, how do we get these younger back? How do we reach the younger vets? We have to change. We didn't do what our parents did. I mean, the values, the foundation, yes. But what we did for fun, or friends, our parents didn't do that. They were a different generation. So why would it be any different for the veterans? We have to find out what they like to do. A lot of them don't drink. A lot of them don't smoke. A lot of them like to ride bikes. Pedal bikes. <coughs> We don't, <laughs> as a whole. So once you find that group of young vets, find out what they do, and to me, it's an easy fix. Tell them, fine, can we be part of your but Do you need someone to run a stop? Do you want us to feed them breakfast? No, they really don't need breakfast in the morning, but dinner would be nice. Okay, what do they eat? Because you and I would eat country fried chicken, you know, bread, <laughs> greens, whatever. They may not. So then all we have to do is find out what they eat and then serve them that. Yep. Do, do a fun fundraiser that we like to do to get the money to be able to cater what they like to eat. And the Legion actually started helping us by going down smoking. That was the whole big push. We gotta get the younger veterans in. We gotta stop the smoking. So that started the push. But now really, who picks up the ball? The auxiliary. Balls in our court now. now we can get in here. We have, I was talking to Cammy, they have auxiliary meals on Thursday night. They have South Sons doing breakfast. They have the um, fire departments coming, all of our first responders come here for free breakfast. They're tapping into their community. If your post closed tomorrow, would your community miss you? You have to be a presence in your community so that they will miss you and they will support you. And believe it or not, we have members who come here for supper because they're at home alone and they have nowhere else to go. And we offer that to them. So we keep saying family, family, family. You know, we have our preamble for God and country to associate with this, ourselves together for the following purposes. You know, there's only one difference between our preamble and the Legion preamble. One line. One line. Ours says to participate in and contribute to the aims and the purposes of the American Legion. All right, so we are a family. Now, some, how do we do that? By working on programs. By helping when they need help. Now, it's not really, is it, is it really paying their electric bill or helping them fix with the air conditioning? It could be. Maybe. It could be, maybe we have a little extra money, we did a big fundraiser. Uh, we just did a bingo fundraiser at our unit, and uh, 
It's our big money maker for our unit. We're a small unit. We don't even have 100 members. And uh, it was really hot in the back room. We had 76 bingo players. And we were like, something put the air on. <laughs> Again, well, guess what? The air needs to be serviced. So at our next auxiliary meeting, <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we give somebody to come out and service it. Because it benefits all of us. You know, so it could. It could be that. It could be just simply, hey, we're going to serve you a meal. It could be we're going to do free meals for veterans on Veterans Day. Also by participating in our programs and our, our quotas and our programs as well, our obligations. Um, so we, I know there's been some incidents um, up here, I know in St. Augustine area, where the post closed. And that was a while, a few years back. And the lady, the auxiliary, excuse me, moved to another location. I think they were working at a library at one point. Okay. Um, what did that make? The unit was still viable. The student unit was still going strong. But what does that make that unit without a post, without a legion? A widow unit. Because we are a family. When without our legion, we're widows. We do a unit. But we can still function. We're still liable. We can still make it happen. Uh, we have, uh, down in the 13th district, we have units that, uh, and Legion families that lost their post in the hurricane. They're sitting at the B, trying to, the BFW trying to raise money. They, they join forces. We all have the same mission. Um, which brings me to this point. We all have the same mission. We're a veterans organization. Maybe you are a small unit and you want to do a big function. Ask the VFW to help. We now have an MOU with Gold Star Mothers. Memorandum of Understanding with Gold Star Mothers. Gold Star Organization. Okay, now. We know they're eligible. We know they've already been vetted. They're a Gold Star Mother. We know they're eligible. Why not help them with their function? Uh, we were extremely fortunate that our past national gold star of the president uh, was from Florida, James, James, she was outgoing when James was coming in. And uh, you want to tell them that we were invited? And she's an auxiliary member, 62 Stewart. And her convention, she invited me to the convention. And I said, I'd love to. And they run their convention a little bit different, but the point was as soon as they open it up and welcome the guests and do a little business, it's all closed. So we immediately went outside and they had the food table set up to feed veterans, first responders, law enforcement. So we're out there serving food. And there's no reason for handing out backpacks. And they're all like, really, you're our guest. Are you sure? A Reese Cross America was out there. I said, that's what we do. Because we all know we don't have the volunteer base. We may have the membership numbers, but we don't have the volunteer base. And I like to tease. You'd like to think that a church would have enough volunteers because they're doing it for God. But how many go to church at any point, no judgment, and you don't have everybody volunteering? So if they can't do it for God, we're not going to get all our members to volunteer. So we have to look at other avenues, and there's no reason for a partnership. Who cares if you do it? And there's no money involved, meaning that it's not a fundraiser, even better. We still get to take our hours for our auxiliary members and claim them at the end of the year. But even if it is a fundraiser, a joint fundraiser, I would rather work less and still make money than ever, every year we're busting our butts, we're getting older, we're getting, you know, making some pains. You have a viable junior base in 5th district, a lot of our districts don't. So it's up to us women to, or auxiliary members to do this and we're getting tired. We're getting old and we're getting tired. So why not join and partner with another organization so we have many more hands and it's a whole lot easier. <laughs> Teddy, we try to get Teddy in my So we were, we were there um, for the event, we were there for the banquet, we were dressed up, it was beautiful, and then we put on our auxiliary shirt with our shorts in July, <laughs> in, in West, West Palm, <laughs> and the sweat 
who's poor and yet, and we were serving food to our first responders, we were giving out backpacks for the homeless, we were sending the police with backpacks, and it was so rewarding, it was so fulfilling, and it was just an amazing thing to do. So why not help? Why not? And then, in turn, we can turn around and say, hey, we need help. Will you come and help and be, you know, help us at our event? Remember, like I said, I'm not a big unit. We have 63 members, 78 members, and you know, three to five workers. <laughs> and then all my friends that come help for my events, I'm calling in refill resources. Come and help me. You know, so join forces. Another one is Resource America now. We also have a memorandum of understanding with them. So again, all our hours, all our participation, that counts for us. Wear your auxiliary shirts, get out there, show them that we're part of the community, and help them as well. Uh, find out who your members, when your members are, are part of. We have members in our unit that are women only for, that are blue star mothers. So we were able to tap into a lot of them. We have, we have members who are volunteers at food banks and churches and all, and they brought those to the table, and it's been a big benefit. And that's a great idea because otherwise if you don't talk to me, I may not tell you those things. Because I'm not one to go, look at me, look at me, I'm so important, here's what I'm doing. I'm not that type of person. So unless you talk to me, you know, and, and we have to be the ones. I sat in a chair the whole time I came to my post home and, and just sat there waiting for people to come to me. I, as a member, need to get out as well. But as we get members of our organization, and obviously you guys are committed to our organization and our mission, because we're here today on a Saturday. So talk to your members, find out what they like, and like I said, should, you know, get, get, get your own team. So Jay just had to make a comment that if she's sitting at the bar, never help it. But let's say Jane is the one who's sitting at the bar, doesn't want to help. But she's always the one who says, I'll take five dollars worth of those tickets. Yep. I'll take five dollars worth of those tickets. Yep, put me down for five dollars worth of those tickets. Is she helping? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you, we went down to help uh, somebody at Fort Pierce. They were having a post fundraiser. We said, well, come help. So they had a whole two tables full of baskets. Probably ladies sitting at the bar. I can't help. I can't walk. So we started carrying the tickets at the bar next to her. She kind of looked at us and said, well, I can do that. We said, there you go. Thanks for your help. And then we went running around again. Yeah. So maybe they don't realize. Maybe they just don't understand. You know, hey, thank you so much for buying those tickets. If I bring it over the bucket, will you tear them off and put them in for me? Of course. Sometimes you have to ask. Sometimes people are just, uh, they never ask either. So maybe you don't need my help. And even if they don't, even if that's all they do is entertain themselves at the social quarters, isn't that still helping the region? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll take that member any day. Mm -hmm. I'll take that member any day because at least there's somebody <coughs> putting money there so maybe we don't have to look at what the legion needs all the time other than the programs. We have a, uh, a couple that comes into our, our post home and they will do anything for the lounge. For the lounge. And we're like, hmm, they're members. She's an auxiliary member, he's better. But they're, that's their drinking hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's their drinking hole. So they want, they'll, do, they'll go get ice, they'll go get limes, they'll, whatever, they'll change the air filter, they'll do whatever it takes. Locked. But it's still helping us. Yes. I don't have to climb on the ladder and change the air filter. The Legionnaire doesn't have to. They are. They painted the outside of the building for us. But they just don't really want to do much of anything else. That's okay. I'm holding up this book. Does everybody know what this is? Yes. Okay. This is our new guide. It changes every single year. And every year it changes because we have new officers. Our constitution and bylaws are in here. Sometimes at convention we vote on changes for that. Um, so every year we ask you to get a new one. This is like our Bible for the Department of Florida, if you will. Everybody knows? Who does not know what this book is? She's a brand new member. Okay. Okay, so. In the spirit of service, not self, the mission of the American Legion Auxiliary is to support the American Legion and to honor the sacrifices of those who serve by enhancing the lives of our veterans, military, and their families, both home and abroad. 
forgot a country. We advocate for veterans, educate our citizens, mentor our youth, and promote patriotism, good citizenship, peace, and security. That is our mission statement. Very first thing in the book. How many people have ever read it? Good. Good job, ladies. That's what we do. We're here to help. We're here to serve. I was talking to somebody uh, just a few minutes before it opened, and I said, you know, you can see on Facebook when somebody posts, look at me, look at me, I did this, I did this, I did this, and take selfies, or when they're going, wow, look at those workers. Mm -hmm. We were at an event. See the difference? Service, not self. Yeah. Okay? So when you're at that event, yeah, we love, I love Paula Fox and she's the selfie queen. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about her. I'm not talking about Paula Fox. I love Paula Fox. But she would be the first one to go, get in the picture, we're working. Get in the picture, we're working. So she, she it's not all about her. Okay, totally different. Totally different. But do you see my point? Okay? We're here to serve. We're here to help. Can we go more in the book? The book also has the Department Constitution of Ottawa's. They have the awards. Well, you know, our unit really does a lot in BA and R, and we didn't get this award. Well, did you read, read the criteria? <laughs> we don't set that up. Department doesn't set it up. The sponsoring person could be a unit. You'll see who it's sponsored by. It could be an individual. We had one that was the family of this past department president that initially created this award, and then the unit picked it up to sponsor it. And they pay an amount to keep it for 10 years. So the unit missed something in that award. So it's very important to have one of those, and they're relatively cheap. And if you're like me and can use the computer, I download it. Yes. Then I've got the PDF and I can search it. <laughs> so I can find out what's in there. Um, let's say our district Americanism chairman didn't quite have an answer. And I said, as a member, would you like to me to call the Department of Americanism? I can find Tammy Zell in there. So I know who to contact. I'm first going to go to district, because that's what we do. We talk about it in the unit. I ask the unit president. She isn't sure. We don't know everything. So then I would go to the district program chairman or whatever. And then if they, we can't get the answer, then we can go to the department. But that information is in there. Um, it defines quotas. We know we all pay the quotas. But what really are those quotas? And if we have that information and we know it, so our new member, we can explain to them what that quota is instead of just, oh, it's a bill that we get every year and we got to pay it to the department. When in turn, it's to help work the program. <coughs> When I, when I joined 20 years ago, we had to collect socks and undergarments for the VA hospitals. We did that. But over time, it became more and more tedious from every unit. So now every unit is not working that program. So they decided, let's go to quotas. And then we can give it to the VA rep at that hospital, and they buy the undergarments. So that's why it's a quota. Girl state. You know last year, we did not want to raise that girl state registration. Well, the quote only covers a little bit. It's nothing. So we had to find other avenues to generate some revenue for the girl state program so we didn't have to put it back on the units because we know what's going to happen. The units will stop. They can't afford it. Look at groceries. Every time I turn around, I say, I was here two weeks ago and it was this much. Now it's this much. So we're, we're getting it from everywhere. We don't want to tap out our members either. So we have to look at other avenues how we can work the program and best serve the program. And joining in with the community is the way to do it. Has everybody seen this book? Yes. Yeah, this is on national. And look sales, it's a national unit guidebook. Also, great wealth of information. Jane mentioned our constitution and bylaws. And as I said, it does change. At convention, we vote on things as members. Now, every unit should have a constitution, bylaws, and standing rules. Does everybody know the difference between all of them? Everybody says, yeah. So the constitution is our, she said, no. Our constitution is our, <laughs> now that, that is our foundation. That says who we are and what we do. 
Why are we here? What is our purpose? If we're incorporated, we would put our letters of incorporation in that. Okay? That is our foundation. Often reviewed, seldom changed. Okay? Bylaws. Bylaws talks more about the officers, the committees, and what are the duties of the officers and these committees. Our standing rules, I like to say, is your unit's housekeeping. What time is your meeting? How much are your dues? What day of the week do you meet? That's standing rules. That can be changed at a meeting <coughs> with a majority vote. God bless you. Bless you. Any questions on your constitution, bylaws, and standing rules? You look like you have a question. I, I'm a member and I don't have a copy. Can I please have one? No, you can't have one. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Let me email you now. I'd like to know what the president should do and shouldn't do. Now everything isn't in there, but I need to know. Does your unit because why would I take first vice president and then the, God forbid something happened to the president? Oh, I don't want to be president. Jane, you ran for unit first vice president. What did you think could happen? And we hear it all the time. Or even worse so to speak, our unit does first vice is membership. Man, I'd really like to process membership, but I don't want to be first vice. Or vice versa. I, I'm thinking I'd like to be unit president one day, but I don't want to process membership. So you may want to look at that to, so we don't pigeonhole members. Remember, find their niche. We had a wonderful, wonderful lady many years ago at our unit. Um, uh, grandmother brought her two granddaughters, her daughters, her granddaughters all joined up. Uh, we're, of course, we're running an election first year. She leaves the bathroom to go to the bathroom, and we fall and told her, Hey, you want to be this? <laughs> yep. She came back out, and we said, Hey, we need a second vice. She's like, Well, I'll be second vice. So the president turns around after the meeting and says, Okay, you're being up. She's like, No, I wanted to do stuff with my grandkids. Can I do children and youth? Nope, second vice is being up. Nanny Momo left, never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. sure. yep. So the first thing I did the next year when I was unit president again was we're taking that out. We're not going to put membership as first vice. We're not going to put VAR as second vice or house committee or uh, entertainment or no. You want to be on that committee? Great. But if you're going to be first vice, there's no there's no program with it. Just like in the department, there's no program with it. Because you may have to step in at any time, right, Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> at any time. And how many unit presidents do we have? Or you were ever a unit president. So you know, you appoint your chairman. That still doesn't mean that your first vice you can't go to Michelle because you know she likes membership to say, would you be interested in taking membership? Because I don't think we can find somebody that, that it just gives you more opportunities than trying to pigeonhole to where she's not going to do it if she doesn't want to do membership. So it's no different. It's no different. And this isn't to be ugly. I was just but unit say presidents, you, appoint, you appointed that chairman. If Jane is not doing her job, what can you do? You unappoint her. You appointed her, you can unappoint her. From the officer? No. There's an election. If I'm third vice, second vice, whatever you have in your units, it depends on the side. I was duly elected. There is no rule that I have to be. If I miss three meetings and all that, there is none of that. There's one election. Well, what you can do if you try first, try to talk to Jane. What's going on? What, you know, is something going on at home? What's happening in your family life? What's going on that we, we miss you and we need you? You were a viable part of this unit. What can we do for you to help you? And if she finally is not responding, well, then you can ask Jane to resign for the good of the unit. But what, in the end result, if she does not, she's it. She's it, so then what do you do? Elections. Because we hear that a lot, and it's like, well, then don't vote Jane in. So if, if, if Jane doesn't show up for first vice, and there's no talking to her, and she's ignoring all your calls, but you need a first vice, you need a first vice, you have a first vice pro tem. She runs the meeting if the president's not there. First vice pro tem. Then she becomes the president. 
So you can get somebody to fill that seat, but it's temporary. There was one election. There's only one election all year. Doesn't matter if your whole board, all your vices and president quit, there's still only one election. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Wait, before you, you had a question on CMB first? No, I was going to okay. tell that on ALAFL.org, you can go on and go on the links and see all the units. Every single unit's constitution of Iowa is on our website. Every single unit. And we use that so that when a district president needs help, they can pull it up. If we're traveling and we need to look at something, we can pull it up. If membership, what's in your standing rules? What did I say? Your membership is in your standing rules. How much your views are. We use that because we give that to national. So when your renewal cards uh, letters come out, it says how much the dues are. But they have to match. Michelle can't say, well, they're $100 and send them to Michelle. <laughs> when really your standing rule says they're only 40 Okay, so we use those as um, a guide. We use that as reference. Um, we do not, we review them, but we do not correct them as a department. That is your unit's constitution and bylaws. The only thing we're looking at is that you are not in direct conflict with department or national. We used to have all the time, she missed two meetings, we're pulling her from first vice, or we're pulling her from Historian, because she doesn't come to the meetings. Can't do it. You gotta get that out of That is a direct conflict. She was voted in by the members. All right. Yes, ma'am. I, I just have a, I'm not real clear on the president pro tem. Is that a, just a you will put somebody right then and there? Or? Okay. Yeah. So let's use this as an example. Um, so we can actually use the department secretary as an example if you like, or we can use a unit. So president. First vice and second vice all decide they're going to take a cruise. Treasury didn't come, we didn't touch the money. We're just taking a cruise. Now it's a meeting night. You're sitting there, who's running the meeting? Secretary. Secretary's running the meeting. How's she taking minutes? On a recorder. <laughs> okay, but we don't record our meetings. So the secretary, you want to stay, can you stand up, tell your name, where you're you're from, where your name is C+. I'm Kelsons, I'm here from 283, I'm unit president. Your secretary actually gets a pro tip to run the meeting. Uh, actually, yeah. the secretary ascertains a motion. Yeah. Is there a motion on the floor for somebody to be president pro tem for this meeting? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, they'll yeah, pick a yeah. past unit president uh, to stand up and run the meeting. Hopefully. Yeah. Do you have a quorum? Can you even have a meeting? Depends on your standing rules. We're a very small unit. We have a very small quorum. If we've got five people in the room and no officers, we still have a quorum. So it depends on your standing rules. What is your quorum that you can continue to do business? Does that answer? And it may not be in this gesture, but believe, believe it or not, it happens to where they said, well, we haven't had a, three, <coughs> a meeting for three months. Why? Because the president wasn't available. What? 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 Video chat. We had it on the department level. We had a secretary leave, and we weren't able to get any amendments or any voting in before convention, because it was literally right before convention. So for an entire year, MKP was Secretary Pro Tem. She was appointed by the president. <laughs> so the president appointed her to be the Secretary Pro Tem for an entire year until we could do an election or change. In this case, we changed our Constitution and Bylaws from the Department of Florida to make it now that we have a volunteer secretary. And I, I'm blessed. I use myself as an example because I'm blessed. I joined a unit 20 years ago when we moved to Florida, and it was an older unit. The ladies were older. They were World War II vets, but they were on it. I received an initiation. I received my membership pin. I received a copy of our Constitution and Bylaws and Standing Rules. I received a unit guide. I was blessed. Because then I took that stuff and I'm going, 
oh, that's why they're doing this and this and this. And I was in the business sector, so I knew what Robert's rules were and how to run, a, uh, how you could run a meeting, okay? But I was blessed. There's, it's all in how we look at it. Because that member will take it home and then she knows. Because we've all felt that way. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't want to ask a question because you didn't want to feel whatever? Whatever. <laughs> you weren't comfortable having the spotlight. You didn't want to seem to be unintelligent. You didn't want them to go, oh, wow, you should have known that. We've all been at one point in our life. So why not give our members what they need? It's not a secret. It's not a secret. So Jane had mentioned that you know the unit president gets to pick their chairman. From the unit president up to the national president, presidents get to pick their chairman. Again, she appoints you, she can unappoint you. So if you wanted to work, help out, and volunteer on the district, who would you talk to? District president. District president. Hey, I really want to get involved. Maybe I don't want to be, you know, I don't know how you guys, if you have a, a first vice, or if you just have historian and chaplain, you know, maybe, maybe, hey, I just want to shadow you. Can I be your secretary? Or can I just learn? Because maybe I'm thinking about running. And I'll tell you, the district president was way easier than unit president. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> way easier than unit president. But anyway, the, 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 all your chairmen, they're appointed by, all, like I said, from unit president all the way up to national, the president gets to appoint their people. I have a question about the quorum. Should it be an even number or an odd number? Well, if you're doing a vote, <laughs> more than likely an odd would be easier. And most of the units that we're looking at now, the ones that come in, they've, they've toned it back. Because why would you have like 11 when you can't, and then you can never run a meeting because you don't have enough people there. Oh, come on. You know, we laugh about Lady Lake and Madeira Beach, the two largest <laughs> units in our organization nationwide. Okay? But they're not going to, all these members, Madeira Beach, 4,000 members. Okay? You're only going to get so many to a meeting. Okay? And that brings up two points in my mind it's the same percentage. It really is. Mm -hmm. Just because they have 50 members at their meetings, out of 4,000, it's the same percentage as her 100 unit yeah. with five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same percentage, yeah. okay? <clears throat> the other point is, you have a lot of members, they don't want to go to the meeting. Correct. Okay? I can't help it because that's me, being an HR. I'm gonna look at, why don't they? Is it because we're bickering? Is it because we're not offering them anything? Is it because I'm not releasing copies of Constitution of Bylaws and Standing Rules to the members? Or the, tre or the treasurer's report, pick them up, give them back. No, it's members. We are incorporated. Anybody can go online and get information about our unit and all of your units. So we go to, but we need our members to feel like, because how would that make you feel? Well, fine. So wow. we go to District 1 in our travels, and this unit is new. I, I wanted to ask a question before we let the neighbor of the show, if I may. Please. So when you talk about the quorum, are we including the president in that quorum? So if you have an even number, is that including the president? No. <coughs> Can the president no. vote? No. no. Not at the president. So the president can never vote. No, 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 no. Not ever. 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 And you see the whole podium get off the stage and go down to their unit. They're voting. If they're done, they're, they're, exercising, they they're exercising their right. So in a ballot vote, she president can vote. President can. Okay. Yes. If it, if the president wants to speak on a motion and give interject her personal opinions, then she relinquishes the chair to the first vice, comes down. 
says, I think we should give them $200, not $100. Those kids are doing a great job. Now, I just spoke my mind as the president. Do I go back up? No. No. I have to stay down here until the vote's done. Mm. Now, she can't vote because she's the chair. She just assumed the chair as the president. Don't pick on me about the chair either. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a ballot vote. It's elections. We're voting for our new officers. Yes. We decide we're going to do it by ballot. The president can vote. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're all guilty of it to a certain extent, even in my unit. One of, my, one of our members has to remind me, hey, Jane, tell them what that means. Because we're all in the anagrams. A-E-F, B-A-N-R. <laughs> Take that opportunity to say auxiliary emergency, fine. So know your members to look around the room and say, is there anybody that doesn't know what that is? Auxiliary emergency fund is available for any member. Okay? You must have your dues paid. You must be a member in good standing for the past three years. So I'm 24, 23, 22. Thank goodness I can count today. Okay? <laughs> and let's say I was in, uh, affected by a house fire. Okay, then I can apply for it at the unit level. The unit reviews it. I do, we do everything we need to, and those funds are available from department level, even national level, for that member. But for, but for me to keep spouting in a meeting, AEF, 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 if we don't know what that is, we're not doing any justice to our members. Mary, so let's talk about the quorum. Go for it. So with, with the quorum, what I was trying to get at, because I had been reading uh, standing rules, and it's a quorum of 10. If you're telling that that president is in that quorum of 10, the president doesn't have a vote unless she's going to vote by ballot. So at that point, you have nine members there, so you should have no problem. Engineer, this is in this. I mean, eight, five to four, six to three, whatever else. We have to specify, specify an area. Jane, you have that look on your face. No, I, that's how it is. That's Claremont's? Mm. Well, we're lucky. We get 17 to 23. Oh, okay. okay. Then see, you know your audience, but what if our court is hungry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ours is five, and we get maybe 20 people to a meeting, but we don't ever want to have right. Uh, so that's not the question. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Basically, the thing is, do you really Thank want the president to vote? I say no, because half of this side of the room, they're my friends. Mm -hmm. Half of that side of the room are my friends. So no matter which way I go, someone's going to be mad at me. So Mary, there's a tie. You're the president. Do you have to break the tie? No, I do not. She can abstain. The president does not have to break the tie. She just said it. Half the room is my friend. The other half of the room is my friends. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> I just hate it. I back away. A ballot vote. You know, sometimes if something is really um, touchy, then you do a ballot vote. But you need to make sure you have that in your standing rules. You just can't all of a sudden decide and make all the things is vote by ballot. So now, now go ahead. Mary cannot say as president, I don't want to upset anybody, so I'm not voting. But what she can say is, I don't feel there's enough information. So I'm going to abstain. Then they can come back again next month with more information. Hey, no, I really think we should give those young kids $200 for, you know, all their hard work or for their whole team or whatever. You know, um, with more information. So it's, it can be tabled, she can abstain, and it can be brought back. She, the president does not have to at the time. And that keeps us within our dem democratic system in our country as well as an organization because I should not be expressing my views as president because you're looking to me as a leader and I could sway you. Well, she must know what she's talking about. She's the president. No. Each of you have your own voice, your own mind, and your own opinion, and you're entitled to it, and you're entitled to use it. So I shouldn't just run the meeting and I'm telling everything to you now we're going to vote on this. No, we can, the executive committee as a whole can have an agenda to bring to you. And the executive, your members at large, can bring recommendations to the unit. 
but I should not be swaying you at all. All I am as president is the facilitator of this meeting. So it just makes it fair for everybody. Karen. So I, I'm sorry, uh, back to the forum. Is the forum based on membership or is it based on any number that the uh, unit decides that's gonna be the forum? Any, any number the unit decides in your standing rules and is based on how many people do you get in a meeting? Because what is the quorum doing? A quorum is giving us the opportunity to do business. If we don't have enough members, think about it. Let's say the quorum is five, and we only have two members at that meeting, and they decide that they're going to vote to change the standing rules. <laughs> and now, all these rules come into play, and you're like, well, wait a minute. I wasn't at that meeting. I wasn't at that meeting. Did we have a good representation of our auxiliary that voted to change those standing rules. It can't just be mom and daughter coming in wanting to take over everything, yeah. or whatever the case, I'm using this as an example. Or, or the flip <laughs> side, you have continually have 16 and 19 members there every time, and your quorum is 20. And we see it. You can't do business. You can't do, why are we not doing business? You have 16 people in your meeting. So, so again, the quorum is really what your unit decides is a proper number to represent your unit at a meeting to do business. Karen, you had a question real quick? Yeah, um, I want to go back a little bit sure. to something you guys were talking about, just so we can clear this up. Um, I'm president of my unit. Okay. I'm not at the meeting. So the first vice is running the meeting. I come in late. Do I take over? I, just, I want to know what protocol oh, is. It's really up to the first vice now to yeah. relinquish the chair. Okay. The that first, was my opinion, but I had ice. The first vice. <laughs> don't choke. Don't choke. The yeah, first vice is now running the meeting. You're just a member. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I so want to say. If, if the first vice says, I see our president just walked in, Madam President, please come and assume the chair, then you take it okay. over. Okay. If the first vice is having fun up there being the president, let her do it. Let her do it. Okay, okay. Let her train. And the next let one, let her do it. You're training the next one. <laughs> yeah. But it's really her chair now, or his in some cases. I, just, I, I know that there are times that people can't make it to meetings, and right. so you know that's something I thought would be important to share with Excellent. everybody here. And Excellent. that's only my example, but that was the last position I took in my unit, my original unit before I became president was secretary. Because you are seeing everything. <coughs> You're yeah. seeing everything. You're seeing how the unit is run on the business paperwork level, and you're reading it every month in minutes. You And same thing with the district. I did chairs, but those are appointed. So on the district level, I did sergeant at arms, I did chaplain, and so I skipped history. And it's just not me. It's just not me. I can tell a story. I'm not so good at writing <laughs> stories. And so then I went to district secretary. Then I was ready to be district president. That was just me. But I think it's a good segue. And the more we need to do it, I love Mary, but Mary has been doing X job for the last 35 years in her unit. That doesn't help us. That does not help us. We need to get Mary to mentor Roberta. Then Roberta can then mentor someone else. We need to spread that wealth. We all know it. So real we quick, we were in the first district. I've been wanting, and I should have brought it, and I apologize I did. And the unit comes out and hands me a welcome packet. And said, this is what we give all our new members. There was a picture of every officer, and on the page, so we started with the president, it had a quote by the president, the president's why they joined the organization, a picture, and then it did all the officers, then it had their CMB, um, the applications, uh, anything else per calendar, it was everything pertinent to that unit. So when this brand new member, and an auxiliary pin, their member pin, um, they already felt like they knew somebody when they came to the meeting. They didn't feel like they were, they were like, oh, She's the person. Oh, she's first vice, and I know a little bit. I know why I came and became a member. I, I and she gave me this inspirational quote, and now I feel like I've made the I never thought of it. 
It was amazing. It was amazing. I'm like, we need a copy of that. <laughs> I mean, it was just, just an idea that I wanted to throw out there. It was something really cool. So when we say the members, you know, they, they have a right to do this, they have a right to see their constitution by the laws, treasury report, all of that. Build, build a, a new member packet and give that to your new members and include some of those things in it. We, we, email, we email our new members. That's fine. But, but we also added the parliamentary parliament. Parliamentary procedure? Parliamentary. I can never say it. Into the packet to where they're aware at their first meeting of what protocol is. And it, it depends and on your It helps them make them feel a little bit more comfortable in asking questions. Right. And, what they and it depends on your unit. There's another unit we went to, believe it or not, in the restroom. And over in the corner by some some pretty little painting or something was like an easel board. And on it was all the programs. Americanism. What it is, what that unit did. Uh, national security, blood drive, uh, you know, troop packages to the troops. Because then that member walks in and goes, oh, I didn't know they did blood drives here. Because they didn't happen to see it on the calendar or they didn't happen to. So utilize whatever you have to get these members involved because you'd be surprised if the members, if they knew about it. It's almost like the members that you come to me and say, well, no one asked. I know, but once again, we're going back to church and God. You would think they would just line up for God. <laughs> so we have to ask our members now. So we, were talking, we have to thank our members. We were talking a little bit about a quorum, but let's talk a little bit about the executive committee. So you know you have members at large, and your executive committee and your unit, whether you meet as a family and do a family meeting with, with everyone, or you meet individually. Jay mentioned we make recommendations as the executive committee. So can the executive committee vote on anything? During their meeting? Does every unit have an executive committee? You have two or three members at large as part of your executive committee and your officers. Okay, that constitutes your executive committee. All right? Um, they can make recommendations and then they bring that back to the unit. The members always vote. You are a member, a voting member. If you're a member in good standing, you have a right to vote. So, <coughs> where do we vote for our district president? DCCC. Okay, so at the district, DCC, here we go again. The district constitutional conference. Okay, the district constitutional conference. Do you have to vote for somebody in your unit if you're, somebody in your unit's running for that? No. no. You're, you're a member, you can vote however you want. If you are a delegate at that district constitutional conference, you have your vote. So, in my district, I may go to my unit and say, hey, I want to run for district president. Will you endorse me? Does the unit have to endorse you? No. 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 We were at a DCC and the unit didn't vote for the person. And we're like, but you endorsed her. We thought we had to. No, you don't. What is the reason to endorse somebody? You're backing them. 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 you are backing and he says, hey, I want to run for district president. Will you endorse me? Now, all these other units in the district don't really know Michelle. So they're looking to this unit to go, well, the unit thinks she was a good president. Maybe she will be a good president. Because they really don't know. Because they really don't know. It should be a valid vote. <coughs> it should be a valid vote. So they really don't know how you voted. They're going on the assumption. Yeah. So, so, just like Kimmy said, if you don't feel they can do the job, don't endorse them. Don't vote for them. But again, when you're asking for something like this or somebody's coming to you, this all really should be ballot closed voting. It should not be a show of hands. It should not be a voice vote. All our ballots at department convention are closed ballot. All our voting, excuse me, are closed ballots. And, so, and Michelle, you don't know if that... Um, you can come on up here, you guys. No, no, no. We're kind of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're making right fun of us in the back of the room. <laughs> Just saying. But when you talk about the endorsement, I had a conversation um, 
who they remember a couple of weeks ago. And I was now questioning the endorsement. But what was said to me, well, why wouldn't we endorse her? I said, well, what do you know about her? Right. Right. You know, well, it's our duty. No. What do you know about her? It is, it is your duty. <clears throat> it is your duty as a member to make the right choice. And I don't mean for the person. I mean, is this, are you doing the right thing or are you just following along? Mm -hmm. Are you just doing it because you don't know? If you're not sure, ask. Exactly. And you know, and, and Kim hit it right on the head. That means you feel 100% confident that Roberta is going to do a great job. So we're going to have Roberta and we're going to endorse her wholeheartedly because we know she's going to do a great job. Or, or you know, Vern or, or, or you know, uh, Julie. I mean, but. Do I need an endorsement? No. 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 I'm living proof. No. No. It wasn't that my unit <laughs> wouldn't endorse me. It's they, as I'm ready to, to get ready to ask to be endorsed, they're like, can you be unit president one more time? Please, 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 we'll help you and then we'll find somebody. And I succumb to that. So then it comes time for the election and someone, another woman is nominated from the floor and she wins. They all couldn't believe I was happy. Yay! Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks is District 1, DCC, District Constitutional Conference, and they nominated me from the floor, and I got district president, and 10 years later, 12 years later, I'm department president. So it can happen. It just, I didn't have time, because it must be turned in in X amount of, you know, time, 30 days prior to your so DCC. we were talking August. Charlotte is a good example. She was yeah. caucus. Do you know what a caucus is? No. no. Let's let's say all of our 16 districts go to their DCC, their district constitutional conferences, and no one is elected because they don't want to do it. What do you do? Julie's like, I've already been here years. I can't do it no. anymore. <laughs> Nobody wants to step up. We you can't gotta... do a district. We can't run District Five without a district president. We have to have a district president. Well, then that's where the department president announces, if you remember it's happened before at department convention, where they say there would, ladies, before we adjourn for lunch, there will be a, a caucus, a district caucus for district whatever and whatever. And then that's where the members of that district have to go in the corner and it's usually a past department president that is involved and they end up getting somebody to, to be district president. Okay, okay let's well, say it like this. Nobody's leaving until we have a district president. Yeah. So we're staying here until we get one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. Come on now. This is what we do. Nobody's leaving until we have a district president. In my case, in my case the district president that was going to be resigned two weeks before convention. So it was like, okay. Technically, when I, I was being, I was being groomed to be the next one after her. So, but I was still confident. So you were actually lucky that somebody was mentoring you. Exactly. <laughs> I started off as a chairman, district chairman, district sergeant at arms. Um, I don't know, I was the district secretary after I was district president. But, <laughs> but I mean, I was groomed along the way. I was with the district president, I would travel with her to the installations. I would learn of the other, the other things so that I saw what was going on. Our next district president, I did the same thing. I groomed her. She went with me to the installation. She went with me to my unit meeting so that she could see how it was done. And it, that's the way that's the way we do it in our district. It's mentoring. And things change. Things are always going to change. Jacksonville, Jacksonville may not be a good example because it's a, such a large metropolitan area. But we have a unit in the 4th District that they were like this close to closing for good. There were no Vietnam veteran age group members or younger in that area, period. Farming community, they are this close. And all of a sudden, all these people from Lauderdale, Miami, West Palm, you name them, we're retiring and what are we doing? We're selling our house down there and we're getting out of Dodge. And they bought up in this farming community. And now that post home is starting to thrive. They had one in another area in their district that they've already surpassed their five-year plan of growth. They've already passed it. 
Didn't even take five years for them to. So now they're looking at build adding on to their post home because there are so many people getting out. So we are going to see changes in our organization, and it's just not how many veterans are in our area. Who's our membership pool? It is what it is. Somebody mentioned the Zoom. They didn't say Zoom. They mentioned electronic meeting. They mm -hmm. were standing in the back. Mm -hmm. kind of. yeah. We have units that have put that, voted it properly, and the general membership voted to have Zoom meetings. And I'm telling you right now, I was shocked when I went to one of them. It's in my district. And during my visit, we have a meeting tomorrow, so I'll come back for the meeting. And the number of members that were on that Zoom meeting that still knew what was going on, they're still contributing, and one of you all said, yep, yeah, I'll go to Mary's house and pick that up. So they've got her clipping coupons or whatever, and then Mary did volunteers to go pick it up. So these members are still viable. And all it is because, what, you're not going to have a Zoom, you're not going to allow a Zoom? Let the, vote, the members vote on it. It's a possibility. It isn't everyone Zoom, but the secretary that it, that is capable is running that meeting, and they know they're muted. They have to raise their hands if you've done a Zoom or anything like it. Teams, you know what I'm talking about. So then the secretary just waits until the president recognizes her, and she says, you know, Susie Q's on the Zoom meeting, and she would like to um, speak. And so the president recognizes her as if she was standing in the room. Well, they have to be able to do stuff like that. And how nice for your younger members with kids. They're busy. We know they're busy. We know why they're not. We may get them as a member signed up, but we're not getting the active members because they're running the kids to soccer and everything else. We have to think outside of the box. And they have viable options to volunteer. That we just need to get it out of them, find out what they can do, and utilize it. So let's go back to the voting. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, can we vote on going back to the voting? <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be a ballot? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you can choose short answer. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we'll get offended. I feel like we'll get offended. Yeah. Um, Charlie, is it okay if I mention? So, um, we have a lot of candidates running in the Department of Florida this year, a um, couple for different various officers. And they get three minutes to speak. So how do you know if they're really the candidate? Um, I, I was telling somebody, Arkansas, uh, the Department of Arkansas had two candidates running for department president. Because any member in good standing, the one makes a member in good standing, they made their dues, <laughs> they run for any office. Okay? So we had two, two people that had running for department president. And it became very argumentative and very ugly. So during their department convention, somebody nominated somebody from the floor, and that person won. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have two candidates who had their themes, their pins picked out, the whole nine yards, and neither one of them won. Okay? So this year I was talking to our uh, first vice, and our first vice gets to pick all the breakouts for convention on Thursday. Mm -hmm. They're in charge of them because it's their people coming in, you know, new unit presidents, unit secretaries, churches, that kind of stuff. And I said, why don't we do a candidate's call? Now, the Legion does it at every DCC district constitutional conference they go to. They travel to all of them and say, hey, vote for me. This is my campaign voting, you know, my campaign um, slogan, whatever. Um, but we don't as an auxiliary. So this year, in one of our breakouts, we're going to have in the main room where all the candidates are going to be invited to come, whether they do or not. It's totally voluntary, and we're going to do a candidate's call. Where they're going to, the, the members are going to, it's going to be through a proxy, so no bad questions. We're going to be making sure everything's legit, um, and uh, you can actually ask them some questions. Hey, you got three minutes to tell me everything you did, but now I want to know what you're going to do for me as a member. This is our opportunity. You are members, you have that right. So this is an opportunity where you're gonna get a chance to actually ask the candidates. What can they do? Hey, if we've got somebody running for, I'm gonna use Charlotte because she's in the room and I don't wanna pick on anybody. He's like, Charlotte. <laughs> so if Charlotte, if Charlotte gets up there and Charlotte's like, well, I don't really know. Maybe I don't wanna run. Or I can't, but maybe somebody who's already, who is aspiring to move up says, you know what? I can do a better job than her. I'm going to run off the floor 
and get somebody to nominate them off the floor. You never know. You never know. Plus, in reality, like Michelle said, three minutes goes real fast. How many times at department convention have you heard the district president? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then especially yeah. the larger ones. <laughs> they have 20 units, 20 plus units in the district. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, three minutes is quick. And you should not have a, you should not be voting on a department officer on just three minutes. Yes, their unit endorsed them. But like Mary just said, well, I thought, why wouldn't I endorse them? Because maybe they're not the right candidate? We don't know. I'd like could to, be, could not be. We don't really know. I'd like to add to that. Um, I mean, I came up to the ranks. You know, my nominee has been to someone back in my day who started as historian chaplain as vice president and president. So there was another person running for historian. So how do I go up there and try to you know, compete against that person? This is who I am. This is what I will do. Do I want to know, as a member, how many ABC classes have you been to? How many conventions? And, and my dad, and my granddad, and my brother, and my son, and my this, and my that, and that, that, that. It's flow. That's not the person that I want to listen to. I want to listen to flow. I want to know, what are you capable of doing? What are you going to do for our organization? And you're right. And you're right. And you're right. And you're right. You're right. You're right. Why did you join this organization? Why did you have passion? You know, we all love to help. We all love to, it makes us feel good helping, right? It's actually a term for it, it's called helper's high. And it does, you kind of get a little excited. Oh my God, I just helped them. Mm -hmm. I, I told you guys when we were at that Gold Star Mothers mm -hmm. event, it was the most rewarding thing I have done in years was to give back at this event. It was amazing. It was so heartfelt, so touching. It makes us feel good. So. Why? Why do you want to do this? Tell us about it. So uh, what I did, I mean, Charlotte was getting her endorsement letter up, right? And I saw the one from one, I said, Charlotte, you got to change it. <laughs> so I was, I was in department headquarters and I started doing this. It's fine, you know, her eligibility is there, but do you really care that she's been a district president six times, she's been a unit president ten times? She served, you know, in any different capacity. But my final line was, and who can forget the smile on the veterans' faces when Charlotte visits Lake Nona, VA? That was basically the closing line. And I'm leaning to over the phone, and I'm crying, I'm white. This is always yelling at me for crying. <laughs> it was just something, ending with something that was positive. She's down at their VA hospital down Lake Baldwin. She's putting a smile on what? On who? Our veterans' faces. These are the same. I've been on Zoom meeting these past couple of weeks, and Michelle, what did I say? I agree with Mary in some respect. Uh, we are an extremely strong department. Um, I am now on my third national chairmanship. I am the National Constitution and Bylaws Chairman. Um, we are an extremely strong department. And that's the only reason why I threw that out there. Today I'm an ABC instructor. But we really are a strong department. We have a boot camp, the chairman go. Chairman goes to boot camp as soon as they're appointed by the president. Right after convention, they go to a boot camp. We get in there on a Thursday, they don't leave until uh, Thursday, they don't leave until Sunday. When they're done, they have their program action plan, program engagement plan, their their template for the year of how they're going to promote their program. Then we go to workshop. That happens within 30 days to 45 days after convention. The president has to put on a workshop. That's done in Orlando. That's where the chairman present their programs to the members. Your district officers and your district president then comes back into your district and her chairman present the school of instruction using the department's program plan, program engagement plan, program action plan, whatever you want to call it. Um, that teaches you about all the programs. We, our department chairman, have to go to their national counterparts' Zoom meetings. Everything is done by Zoom now. Quarterly newsletters, quarterly meetings. Um, what else am I missing? 
They're, they're responsible for keeping everything updated on the department website. Um, we really try to hold, try to hold our chairman accountable. Um, again, ultimately, it is the president to say, hey, you're not doing a good job, I'm going to remove you, or you are, or encourage them on how they can do better. Um, but we are an extremely strong department. Uh, when I was moving up the ranks, our, our secretary at the time made all the chairman cry at the camp. <laughs> um, she taught us how to speak and taught us how to stand and not to stand up there and, while you're speaking. And, um, and I, it was, Jade and I, there were many of the camps we walked out going, holy crap, man, they're making everybody cry. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do this. <laughs> but it did make us a strong department. Karen, you had a question? Yes, I did. Regarding the candidates call, because this is something that the auxiliary is doing that is going to be new, correct? correct? Are, because I am endorsed as, as a candidate for um, department next year, will people be standing up and reading questions? How is this going to work? So um, what we'd like to do is have the, a moderator read the questions, but all the questions will be coming over to somebody first to make sure that they're good. Professional questions. Right. We wouldn't have. We don't want somebody to get together. We don't want to deal with gossip. Or gossip. Or yeah. We heard, Karen, Whatever. that you, you know, we don't I know. did it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, you owned it. Exactly. That's after that right there. Exactly. Um, so we want to make sure everything's legit, and then those questions will be handed to the moderator. For you. Hey, we got a question for the historians. Uh, we'll start in alphabetical order. Oh, we got a question for the chaplains. We'll start in alphabetical order. Okay. Uh, you know, something like that. Uh, but all the questions will be run through first. Okay. And only be the ones that are endorsed, uh, because anybody can run off the floor at any, you know, okay. when we do for for final nominations, okay. which is 24 hours in advance. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Just, we thought, said, so, hey, Charlotte, let's shake it up a bit. I, I like it. I think it's good, because standing up and just reading my fluff, yeah. as yeah. MKP put it, that doesn't mean anything. Can be. Come on up here a second. <laughs> Actually, what I wanted to talk to you about was, can you explain what an indoors and a non-indoors candidate can do? Sure. So before we do that, I want everybody to look at Cammy's shirt. <laughs> yes. Cammy has an emblem on it. <laughs> Who approves that emblem? That girl. Yeah, you know. MKB, the emblem police. Um, <laughs> I've already been yes, on this. I've already been busted today. I just want to, so National actually, go ahead, Molly. I'll answer your question in just a moment. Um, National Legion owns our emblem. Legion owns our emblem. You know how we have the new branding? Okay. Legion did it, not the auxiliary. This is our new branding. This is not our emblem. This is our logo. That is our emblem. But all uh, shirts, all anything that is not day-to-day -day business must be approved by the department and then sent to national. And that's MKP's job. I'm on the Nazi here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the new logo? Yes. yes. Good. That's what we're hearing. I love it. So, because how many of you were somewhere and they said, oh, well, you're not a good Are you allowed to wear this? Yeah. Yes. No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the emblem is still our emblem. That's our emblem. This is the logo. It's for Brandy. Brandy. See the difference? <laughs> how many of you? would be in an elevator with somebody and they would say, are you a cop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't matter what they say, they have to look at that emblem. Okay, there's none of that on this. American Legion Auxiliary. It's a wonderful tool. If we can just get members to understand, your emblem is your emblem. This is still... Your oh, emblem is still valid. It is your emblem. <laughs> that is our emblem. That will always be your emblem. However, when we're looking for communities, public, other VSOs, other service organizations that are community based, it is a whole lot easier when we have American Legion Auxiliary. They can read. They can read. 
So it's still wonderful. We still wear it. It's still on, you know, pins. We're still going to use it. But that logo was just another way for the Legion family to, to get noticed. There's a lot of people out there that have charities and whatever. What stands us apart? And that logo, and we're hearing it everywhere we travel, at least in Florida. And we love it. We couldn't wait for Girls' Day. You know, the riders have a new one. I went to the rider summit and I had to do a 10 minute spiel on family and I wore my new rider shirt with the new logo because it it does. Otherwise it's a okay, eagle and your oh they're, they're, they ride motorcycles, they no, they know American Legion riders. So our yeah. emblem, our emblem, as Jane said, is never going away. And we do have it in our um, you can actually go to the National's <coughs> website and you can pull pull down Every single part of that emblem means something. Every single part of it means something. So that's why we have a emblem police. Because if you change it in any way, you're changing our meaning. Okay, so very interesting information. Um, but I do want to get back to your question. I just had to throw that out there. Um, what's the difference between being endorsed and not endorsed? What you can and cannot do as an endorsed person or as a not so, as an endorsed candidate, immediately following fall conference, you're allowed to um, say, I'm running for office. I don't like to say campaign because the auxiliary does not campaign. But you can show up at different district constitutional conferences and say, hey, I just wanted to come here and say, my name is Michelle, I'm running for blah, 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 and I really would love for you if I had your um, support. Uh, these are the things I may want to do for you. You're welcome to do that. Once your endorsement is posted up on our department website, okay, it gets posted after fall conference. We read them at fall conference that you're endorsed, then we put them up on our website. As a department president, you cannot start fundraising until 18 years, 18 months. <laughs> 18 months. 18 months. 18 months, 18 months, 18 months prior to wow. you taking office. 18 months. Okay? Now, we're at the BCC. We're at a district constitutional conference. Uh, Julie's going to run for district president, and I'm coming off the floor. I can't campaign. I'm not a candidate. I haven't been nominated yet. So there is no campaigning. There is no flyer saying, hey, vote for me. You have not been nominated. How could you campaign? So that doesn't happen. Shouldn't happen. If it does happen, it's a bad election. Are you allowed, are you allowed to tell people no, no. Because who the heck you? What happens if I'm coming off the floor and you're going to nominate me off the floor, and then you don't show up, or you get sick, or you decide you know what? Julie's going to be better than Michelle. I want to go for Julie. You're not nominated until you're nominated. And when you're nominated, you don't read an endorsement letter. You say, "I nominate Michelle." That's it. There is no endorsement. Well, Michelle has done this, 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 and this, and this. No, you're not endorsing her. You're nominating her. You're so nominating her from the floor. I nominate Michelle for this position. That's it. So there's only one office uh, in the Department of Florida that you have to serve as a unit president um, in order to get an endorsement. And what position is that? Yeah, that is district president, and that is you must be a member of, of the unit that is endorsing you. You must have served as unit president for six months. Why? Because it brings us back to what Candy said earlier. How could that unit endorse you if you've never been their president? How do they know what kind of job they're going to do? I mean, really. That doesn't mean you can never run for district president if you've never served as your home unit. I've been displaced. I've been in five units, three units, three units in Florida. Okay? I wasn't pres unit president of the unit I now belong to. But that doesn't mean I can't run for district president. I would just have to get somebody to nominate me from the floor. Okay. This is only on the endorsement. I cannot, in good conscience, ask my current unit to endorse me for district president, and they have never seen me as unit president. 
Make sense? Mm -hmm. It's just the endorsement part. I'll give you one. It does better. not state that you cannot run. We had a national president who was never department president. We had a national president who was never a department president of any department. Nicole Clapp, two years, 2020 to 2022, or 2019 to 2021. It's during COVID, so she was two years. She was the finance chairman for national. She held several chairs for national, but she was never a department president. She was an honorary junior national vice junior president, but she was never a department president. Her department, but she was never a department president. Any member can run for any office. We're just talking she doesn't have an endorsement. Mm -hmm. And when, when a member is running, I am not running against that Remember. person. I am running for the position of. I lost, I ran for third vice. I'm a past department president. For those of you who don't know, I ran for third vice and I lost. Um, it got ugly. You just didn't win. It got ugly. No, 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 there was a whole bunch of people who didn't want me. And they made it known. And I said, but I'm running for the position. They pitted us against each other. It was a horrible, horrible thing. And then the person who did the elections told the vote on the floor. And I lost by 33 votes in a room of over 700 voting. Yeah. Wow. Okay? The room was divided. Mm -hmm. And it showed it was divided. Mm -hmm. So I held my head up high. I went over to the person. I congratulated them about 10 o'clock at night. We walked out to my truck and I said, now can I cry? And she goes, now you're going to cry. <laughs> okay? And she said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to hold my head up high all year and I'm going to come back again next year. Right. And that's and what I did. And Michelle, it made you strong. I did not take my toys and go home. I knew what I wanted, and the members told me. It was, that room was divided. And I'll be honest, I, I will tell you, she never said, Susie beat me. No. Because that isn't it. Yet. I lost. I lost. I lost by 33 so votes. You and you go back. Didn't stop me. I said, I'll keep running. And so I'll outlive those did. old people. I'll keep running. I'll keep running. <laughs> and, and, and the bigger thing that I take out of it is that I'm glad the audience saw. Yeah. Wait a minute. He, I wouldn't say play. I don't know the right word, but you understand what I mean. The room was like, no, this shouldn't be, yeah. you know, come on. Vote for who you want. I don't care who you vote for as long as you vote. And it was, it was, a, it was one know. of our all-time favorite mentors who was the election chairman. And when she got up there and said the vote, we all went, holy moly, wow. holy moly. Yeah. Um, so I think she knew what she was doing. Uh, the election chairman should get up there and ask the president to ascertain a motion to destroy the ballots, to destroy the vote. She didn't want to go that route. She wanted the members to know this room was divided and we need to come together. So it was cool, but I didn't go home. I want to back, we got you next. Yeah. backtrack to where you were talking about emblem versus mm -hmm. brand. Um, our unit does a scholarship and when I was going in to do the new letter of it, I was like confused because it's always been the emblem. But then I see this new stuff. So I went on the national and looked, and the clarity that I got was the emblem will never change. It, it is for all of our legal documents. Mm -hmm. The new brand is to reach the public. That's so it. I changed from our emblem to the brand. And if you think about it, okay, I'm a, I'm a high school student, and I'm looking over all these multitude of scholarships. I'm going to notice that new logo, American Legion Auxiliary. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't make it better or worse, it just makes it easier and quicker, and I love the new logo. Yeah, I like it. Is it ever wrong to put both on documents? Yes, it's... I mean, just to put the visuals so they associate? I mean, uh, what kind of document? Yeah. Your minutes, Mike, it's just my personal opinion. Your minutes should have the album. We're all members. But like a flyer to the public, 
Use the branding. Use the logo. Yeah. Um, I'm going to revert this to MKP. Did you? Yeah, the guidelines. Stationary uh, to the public. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you're going to National's website and you go to the auxiliary website and type in uh, logo, branding, emblem, it jumps you to the leash chain. And then you have to say, yes, I will download it, but I promise I will be good about using this. And you have to click, I agree. And then you can download them in a zip file. Um, I don't ever see where there would be a situation where you put them both. No, you wouldn't put them both. No. And what National basically says is that stationary, they, they want to keep the emblem out there. So the stationary is more of a, a formal letter going to businesses. So it's either or. Department has gone to the branding. We like it better. It, it just sticks out so you see this little circle that it's hit. Doing. It's fresh. It's trendy. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's easier. And it is, uh, if you go to the national website uh, and you have the templates, they'll bring you the template and they're all using the new branded on your business cards. You know, so <coughs> It, it isn't that it's better or worse. I still have my shirts with the emblem, but when she walks into public, yeah. public yes. as well as public, public <laughs> they know where she's yeah. from. Yes. They know exactly, immediately, they know where she's from. It, it's just easier. The biggest thing with the branding is you have to follow the rules. You cannot change the colors. And last year when we were in North Carolina at the National Convention, we were sitting down with Co, Co. who was a national employee and were admiring her shirt, which was kind of like a, a royal blue, dark purple. And we ran in the same color and I'm looking at Michelle, so I was looking at me on the same thing. And this gal was just really down with her and said, where'd you get that shirt from? Just like I said to Kevin, she went, where'd you get that shirt from? What color is the brandy, Michelle? White or black or black. So another very interesting fact about it, see the line underneath? That line actually changes depending on what organization. Are we in the SAL? Are we in the Legion? That determines where that line is. So, um, question. When we non like at our can you stand up and tell us your name where you're from? <laughs> if you can, if you can't stand up, just yeah, yeah, say it from yeah. the stand. Hi, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kathy from 129. Um, my question was on the nomination when somebody comes off the floor, does that have to be seconded? It does. And then what happens? Do we second it, make it a motion? Does it have to, once it's nominated, second it, does it go into a motion? No, it does not. Okay. Thank no, you. it does not. Thank you. Great question. Yep. Okay. And on the ballot. That's it. It's a, it's a writing on the ballot. Okay. And that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's 24 hours in advance. We always do our nominations to our convention 24 hours in advance. And if you're talking about the DCC, your district constitutional conference, that would be handwritten on the ballot. Okay. Handwriting. Okay. Um, and then that the secretary, the district secretary, should immediately write that in on all the ballots. Okay. Um, Thank you. It just needs to be. It just needs to be seconded. Okay. That's it. There is no vote. Uh, your sure vote that. will come yeah. down to the election. I wasn't sure how that. Excellent. Was Excellent question. Somebody how how we would move forward because I knew it was something else had to be done to move forward. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent okay. question. Okay. They always say your minds can only absorb what your bodies can take. So we're going to, they're giving me a signal. We're going to take a five-minute break. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
to get this endorsement to department, and that is in your unit guidebook. It must be a certified registered receipt letter. It must be dated. It must be sent to department, and they must have it before you can start sending the unit endorsed. It must be posted on the website. And where on the website? It is under, it is under uh, officers and headquarters, and it will have a little thing that says nominations. A little drop down. Endorsements, I'm sorry, endorsements. So I, Julie. I know we have some new people here, and you keep referencing our, our wonderful unit guide. Um, can you explain to some of the new people where you could get the unit guide? We sell our unit guide on our department website, alafl.org. It's $2.50, and it is available at our store. So if you click the little button that says store, you can purchase this and many of our new branding as well. Um, and that is all available on our department store at alafl.org. Click on the top right store and it takes you right to that website and you can purchase it there. We also sell them at workshop. We also sell them at fall conference and convention. We will have some leftover at convention. Do not buy last year's unless you want it for history because every year District presidents change, officers change, phone numbers change, okay? And our constitution and bylaws change. Okay. You can also access that, right, to look if you want to, there's a downloadable, just to kind of reference. Yes, as Jane said earlier, you can also download the unit guide. I like to keep a copy on my desktop so I can do a control F and I can do a search. Hmm. It's a PDF, you can search. Control F, fine. It works right yep. Yes, it's a member that you want to be active for six dollars and fifty cents. That's a nice little event, uh, investment and 20, 20 unit guides so you can hand them out and, and utilize it with your members. Off uh, unit presidents, when you come to workshop, buy ten for your officers. Go say some of the units. Absolutely, yeah. buy them for your officers. We buy for some of your too. chairmen. We buy Absolutely. Extra. Is that what you're going to yeah. say? Yes, yeah. ma'am. So when we go to workshop, that's the first thing we do is run in and we grab some for all our officers and all our chairmen and make sure everybody has a book so everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Oh, new no to the no organization, so I have a question. You talk about Can you tell us your name? My name is George Jones and I'm going to put a period Good name. You know what? You know. You're a new legionnaire or an auxiliary member? We are a unit. The legion is the post. Now we could have a dual member, which we thank. Thank you. Is there any other people? Oh, thank you. Any other female veterans? You're a female veteran as well. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Go right ahead. Okay. You talked about how you're going to have changing the unit guide and Department convention. Department convention is when we vote on the department officers. Uh, at the district constitutional conference is when you vote on your district president. And now the unit. So, unit. You start, we have to have your D district constitutional conference has to be so many days prior to convention. Your unit has to vote, no more than 90, no late, less than 15 prior to department convention. We start doing nominations in, depending on where your unit meeting falls, it would be March, April, elections in May, June is our convention. If your meeting is at the end of the month, you may have to do it in February, start because our, our convention is in the beginning of June this year. All right, so you have to watch. Uh, now, how many times do we have to call for nominations? Three. Three. Presidents? Three. Okay. So according to Robert's rules, and this is coming from your National Constitution and Bylaws Chairman, you do not. Yeah. Nominations should never be closed as long as somebody's willing to run. So you say it once. You do not have to say it three times. It is a custom, not a requirement. It's not, it's not Robert's rules. It is in Robert's rules. That's what I thought. It, it is in Robert's rules Robert's one time. Just one time. Just one time. Right. Robert's rule says we never close nominations as long as somebody is willing to run. Mm -hmm. So we only have to say it once. 
Are there any other nominations? No one speaks out. Hearing none, now we will close in for this meeting. Now, we do it at the department convention because it is a custom and it's a big room. <laughs> and sometimes we don't want to miss anybody. But it is strictly a custom, not a requirement. Once is enough. Just so everybody in this room knows, our DCC 5th district will be May 25th. It's the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. So, mm -hmm. Just so you guys know, at 1.37, we'll start in the morning over on the west side. So we only have two months. So, thanks for the heads up there. So that right. is, just got the date from. Um, <laughs> DCC is 60, 6, 60, 60 for DCC for units, it's 90, I believe. And Julie, did you send in the form with the uh, department of the your DCC code? I'm going to do it Monday. Okay. <laughs> because what will happen, we have our closed books, so we have to look to see when your DCC is so close the books. Mary just said close the books. What's close the books? The pen. End of the fiscal. Well, close the books is what we call for our membership. Okay, that's where we close our membership and we start counting for our delegates. Okay, so at department convention, your unit has so many delegates according to your membership. It used to be 15. We can never get this information out in time. So last year at department convention, we had a vote on the floor and passed for 30, 30 days. So now we're 30 days closed prior to department convention. That gives headquarters enough time to get the delegate strength out to the units. Because you have so many delegates per members. Okay? So if your unit has 100 members, you get one for your charter, one for every fraction of 50, I believe, Mary? Yes. Yeah. One for every fraction of 50, so you're looking at three delegates. Okay? So it goes by your membership, how many delegates representation. And in the back of your unit guide, there's just an ask. Your delegate strength is leadership. You may not find that information. You should be a Thank you, Mary. So in the back of your book, page 81, it will tell you, that's before all the reporting, it will tell you your delegate strength at department convention. Now, how many people have been to a department convention? You know when we stand up there and we ask for delegates for, for national convention? Same thing. It goes by our department membership. Okay? So it, we have to put a cutoff somewhere. How do we know? Same as your district constitutional conference. By the time you get to the district constitutional conference, we need to know how many members your unit has and your unit has so we know how many delegates can vote in. Fun. Go for it. Want to have some fun? Yes. Because you know last year we talked about work, 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 play, play, play. Mm -hmm. Juniors are our future. And I'm going to tell you right now, traveling this state, even our nation, you are blessed in this district that you have a lot of junior members and you have active junior members. My unit. Thank you, so Junior members. <laughs> they just don't live in Safety Harbor. They're grandchildren, they're, they're children that are, you know, with another parent, whatever the case may be, so you're very fortunate. And you know from last year, I highlight juniors. I love our juniors because if we can get a member from this, who knows what's gonna happen there? Yeah. Yep, who knows what's gonna happen. So we do have a special presentation, we do not. I'd like to call the president back up, Kenny. She has a presentation for juniors. For you who don't know, this is the AK. She is the honorary, what is it, is it national yet? No, it's the department. President, department president this year. And she sent me an email 
on her mom's email, but we can tell it was from me. <laughs> And she has a pet project this year called Canine Line, correct? Oh, yes. And she has been, if you've seen Facebook pages, she has been working her little tail off. And Unit 283 would like to offer, give you a donation of $500. Oh, wow. Michelle was talking about how, do, how does that information come up? 
and she gave the chronological timeline, it's important for that information. I shouldn't come back as a district officer or president or chairman and go, oh yeah, okay, and throw it there. No, I said I was going to be the district Americanism chairman. I best get in touch with all the Americanism chairmen from each unit and disseminate that information. We cannot hold it and protect it and act like it's ours. It's not. We have to do it. Because look at good we can do when we do have that information and pass it on. And your, your district is the only district that I'm aware of that holds monthly meetings, which is amazing. Wow. Huh. And we've been to quite a few of them. We just get a nice showing. I mean, it's not just a little meeting. It's a meeting. You know, so, um, but on that note, um, we really need to take off. I think we're going to go ahead and turn this over now to Charlotte and Mary. We want to thank you ladies so much. We can't we apologize. <laughs> about the number of delegates we can send, and she referenced how it's computed as far as one for the charter, one for every 50, but then she said it's based on the number in that unit guidebook. Well, we've surpassed the number of members that was in that unit okay. guidebook, so, so how do we know? What we will do, that's why we have to, the department has to have the dates of all of the DCCs. So when we get back, we're going to look at what that membership was, usually two weeks prior to that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our Friday report, and we're going to look down, we're going to go by district and look at the unit. So you might want to Friday report. Julie, can you bring up the Friday report? Yes, sir, can. Sit. I'm going to check. You want to stay on the table? I want to stay on the table. Checking on it has a stroller. Unfortunately, he had a zipper. And we couldn't get a zipper this weekend. And then he also had some surgery a week ago to try to get his cystosterone down. Oh. <laughs> and we're trying to take care of the planet and not have a sea cell. <laughs> okay, so your unit actually has 239 members paid as right. of yesterday's report. So if you go <clears> to <throat> my book, you, know, you, you go on page 80, 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 you go on page 80,
resume to a Spartan community unit, there would be an additional vote. You could get a county vote. When you go to the department convention, you have to ask the department president in your unit, she gets her own vote. That's right. Provided she is in attendance. She has to be there in order to cast her vote. Gotcha. So I can ask my mind in at 55. Uh, right now, we have 250. So we're going to fall into that same category of seven, but we'll get one more vote if you don't pass the department president. So that's how it's done. Hey, she's got the pen yeah, in her mouth. She's turning on the pen. Just how she's now on it. Yeah, they need to run a battery. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. But it's here. Uh, it only goes up to like uh, 3,975 members. We were, but if we look at uh, Madeira Beach, G73, they exceeded that. So it's just not good. So Thank you. you. One for your charter. It's, it's like with girl state. You can get one for your charter. But on girl state, you get an extra delegate for every one of your business. For convention is every 50. Yes. But, and you also get, as you send the information to you, we get back exactly what our delegates yes. are. Yes, yeah. yes. And then, now, when you come in along with delegates for convention, Mm -hmm. Constitutional conference is totally different, so I'm going to use convention. So if your unit has seven delegates, now we know that we have chaplain, there are two uh, candidates. Third vice, there are two candidates. And I believe this story may have two candidates. <coughs> so how are we going to handle all of this? So you turn around, I just lost my kids. I said we would be getting information from you once we tally everything up. Right. So, so when you have conventions, so you have seven delegates, but only three show. So if you want to register all seven delegates, you can. Okay. But only three show. So other four delegates. Ladies. Ladies. That vote has to go with the majority of those who are voting. And I'm mm -hmm. saying, so yes. have, I, I use the seven because we have three, and you want to vote for Susan Q, and those four doesn't, and those other four have to go with Susan Q. Thank you. <coughs> one of the things that we are going to try to do Saturday morning, we discuss this, um, like at 8 o'clock Saturday morning, we're going to give you a quick synopsis on how to vote. Because you get these papers and everybody's running up to the screen to try to look at the names and whatnot. And they don't know, and then they start hitting in their papers or coming in the wrong boxes. If we can go to file for voting, it would be wonderful. Okay. But it's too expensive, so we can't. So that's it. So you will you will hear a credential report. And we start with unit one and we call the list here to be ready for unit 418. Go down and tell you exactly how many votes you have. The other thing that uh, we come with the convention, if you are an alternate, you will not be sitting <coughs> in the front of the room with your regular delegation. You will be to the back. Okay, that's that the that that national hall. Okay. National yes, <coughs> and alternates sit in the back. So if you are a delegate and you have to get leave the room, then we would put an alternate into your seat you come back. Okay. We're just trying to keep it where you don't have <clears throat> chaos. <laughs> That's an easy word, but I can tell you, with voting last year, we actually had to disqualify over 70 ballots. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, that, that, and, you know, and I'm not saying that this one would have won, because you don't know where that 70 is going. But a good portion of those came from that one person's district. Mary? Yes. I was in the room where the ballots were counted. Yes, you were. And 
When it says Office of Historian and we're voting for one of them, if you circle two, if you circle both of them, it gets thrown out. We saw that. On the back for delegates, they voted for every single one of them. That got thrown out. So the, the certain offices could have turned out differently had people yes, followed yeah. the directions. Yeah, don't put an X over it because that gets thrown out too because the machine the won't have read it. Yeah. We, are, we are using an actual Orange County voting machine. Yes. One more question because Roberta mentioned a word and I am new as you know. That's okay. Um, I understand how you arrive at the delegates, but she used the word alternate delegate. Okay. How do you count? What is an alternate delegate, and how are they appointed or right, so elected? On, on the so district, like, we're going to start with the district. We have 16 districts. So at your DCC, District Constitutional Conference, you will elect a delegate to go to national convention. So I'm skipping. I'm going to a higher level national convention. But if you've got two people who want to go to national convention, you have to have an election. So the one with the most votes will be the delegate, and then the next person will be the alternate. It becomes your department convention. National changed the rules last year. Right now, we were getting seven votes for our charter, and then we get one vote for each additional 1,800 members. Now they changed it, so now we're going to get seven votes for our charter, and then we're going to get one vote every 1,200. So we know that with the officers that go to the National Convention of the Department, is your NEC, which will be D Bell, not K, because D is everything installed, so it will be D Bell. Madam Lady in Waiting has already been elected as president <coughs> and secretary. We are automatics. Jane goes as the NEC for the year 23, 24, and she's strictly on the national website. We just make the registration. So that's going to increase how many votes we're going to get to the national convention. Maybe by I think we get that maybe two or three. So we know that we've got three off the top, and we know that we have 16 district presidents. So that's 19 delegates. We can end up with, and last year we ended up with 45. I registered 45 to go to the National Convention. 37 showed up. But we paid for 45 at $35 a pop. So that may be kind of angry because that was money that we could have saved. So when it comes down to our department convention, even, do you have to, if we say we need to elect 22 people, do you have to vote for all 22? Absolutely not. If you only want to vote for three people, that's all you have to vote for. The more votes you put in, the less it takes away from the person. And Nancy, you came in, you were originally an alternate, correct? Mm -hmm. So Nancy ended up getting to be a delegate because the delegates start talking now. So am I, am I making sense with it? Because I'm, I'm using two mm -hmm. different entities. Yeah, that's yeah. where it's confusing. The alternate, the alternate is, is you're going to have an alternate in case someone mm -hmm. drops out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you always want to have an alternate, or one or two. So you have seven delegates. Okay, so that's within our unit yeah. to go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you have seven delegates and you want to register seven delegates, but when you have your election in the unit level, Okay, delegates to go to the department convention, and you end up with 15 people. So the first seven, highest number going down, the first seven, you just come down in order, and then we're the next seven number. Those are the delegates, the rest of them are going to alternate. I didn't know they had to be elected. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 That, I love right. the way you do that. Is. <laughs> so it's a fact, because... You have to elect your delegates to go to the Department Convention. Now, you can do it in a couple of different ways. I used to do it at our unit. I go around the room. You're going to go to the Department Convention, you're going to go to the Department Convention. 
So I didn't have this list. When it came down to it, the uh, <coughs> president went in. Do you have any nominations for delegate to the Department of Convention? <coughs> Madam President, I move that we send Roberta, Nancy, Pam, Aurora. Nancy. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm looking right at Verna. <laughs> I don't know what she would have been. But we have units out there that say, oh, no, no. <clears throat> I'm saying to my friends, you have to do it as an election. Simple as that. And whatever your standing rules say, if you want to, I don't know if you're going to get this money from, but if you want to turn around and give every delegate $500 to go to the convention, God help you. <laughs> you know, but that's, in, that's in your standing rules. I cannot say you shouldn't do that or you should do that. So. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Thank you. But the, suggest <clears throat> the suggestion is if you are paying for them to go to the convention, they need to attend the convention. They need to attend every session, mm -hmm. not go by, step in, and go, okay, you know what? I'm here and then you go to the pool. Uh, they need, you need to put them for the stipulation that they have to attend every session, every session. and stay in every session. So if you want to say that, as a delegate, we will reimburse you up to X amount of dollars, provided you have attended morning session, afternoon <coughs> session, Thursday breakout. Now, you know, you have, you know, on Saturday they have the writers meeting. So, how many of uh, our auxiliary writers leave the auxiliary to run to the writers meeting? Well, I'm a writer. No, I'm a, but I can't. I'm a writer. I haven't attended a writers meeting in convention for years. You know, we, we, we just can't do that because what are you first? Mm -hmm. Our so auxiliary so member first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which brings me to a reporting issue. Whatever you do for the riders, give them your hours, give them your dollars, give them your time, whatever you do there. You cannot Whatever you do to the riders, you cannot give to the riders and then give to the auxiliary. You cannot. Double dip. You can't double dip. You cannot double dip. Okay. And it's come across for people who don't understand that. Make sense. That's why there's seven. Yes, you can. No, you cannot. Now, if you, know, if you want to wear your best to an auxiliary meeting and the riders say you can take that, I agree with you. Why? Because you came to the auxiliary meeting. Yes. That is what's important to me. I go to the writers' meetings when they tell everyone them know. But whatever I do as a writer, that's what I do to the writers. Should someone know why we shouldn't double dip or can't double dip? I personally would think it would make a difference with the numbers that we hand up that we keep handing up the chain of command. Yes. That would be my thing would be that you we know would be, we would be inflating the numbers for to Congress. Yes. 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 yes, that would be my the writers is a program of the American Legion. Okay. The writers don't do the programs as we do them. They don't get a pet. Yeah. They don't get a pet. We do programs. Am I telling you not to support the writers? Absolutely not. You heard Michelle mention in something that Michelle calls on friends. No. Charlotte and I did go down because auxiliary unit 325 in Hudson was doing a fundraiser to save the post. <coughs> what are you doing this weekend, Charlotte? Going <laughs> 335, I'll meet you there. So we went down to support them. You know, you know, who's going to take those hours? She's going to take whatever hours that she did. I'm going to take whatever hours I did, and we're going to report it to our unit. So you want to put it into community service, so we want to put it into the EAR. You know, that just gives me the rotation. It's actually two way for them. Now, my time, my driving down there and driving back, guess where I gave those? At you. The writer. I gave it to the writers. You know, it's just share the wealth, and I'm not going to give them everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any sense. questions? I'm going to ask. I'm trying to follow uh, Michelle's thing because. Sure, and I do things so speaking, <laughs> speaking on that, when you volunteer for another family, to say like you're doing a legion meal, you can count that on your own delivery hours, correct? Yeah. 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 All right. That's a good point. I volunteered for our units to do 
for Jesus. Why would you say you're mine? Because I can't do this. The Bible won't let me. <laughs> so, that was it. so when I'm doing it on a Tuesday night, which is our weekly, but it's also a region night. So all that time is going into my own zone. But if I go over there because the region is doing something and I assist, can I count those hours? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Where years ago, those of you been around for a long time, no way did you take anything that you did for the region. And where does it go on the impact form? And if you don't know where it goes, when it's out, go to number four. Anything that you're not too sure, just go to number four on the impact form. That's it. So, but in any way you get paid, then it does not You get paid, you cannot take it. not a volunteer if you get paid. Correct. That's Correct. I am a volunteer. Secretary of the Department of Florida, do I get a paycheck? Absolutely not. I do not. But I, do I get compensation? Yes, I do. My compensation is mileage. Do I go into the office five days a week? No, I do not. I'm at home. So I walk around with the, I call the perfect phone. I told Charlotte I'll change the cover. If, if she appoints me next, I'll change the cover. But that phone yeah. is always on 24 7. It's now only on from 8 until 4 30. I'm a volunteer. I answer the emails. Have I ever refused a phone call from anybody? Absolutely not. If you want to call me at 8 o'clock tonight, if your name pops up and I know who you are, I'm going to answer the phone. If I don't know, leave a message. <laughs> if you call the department, you're going to get prompts. You mm -hmm. speak to the treasurer, membership, or secretary. But we don't listen to those prompts. So I'm getting calls about the real estate. What do I do? I turn into this call. If I can answer the question, I will. But I still say, you need to get in touch with Paula Fox. Here's her phone number. Here's her email address. Yes, Karen. Mary and I have had lots of conversations, and the easiest way to commu with, communicate with Mary is by email. Mm -hmm. You're leaving a paper trail, she can get back to you when she has time, you're not interrupting her in something, and then you aren't guessing. What did she say on the phone? Mm -hmm. You have it in writing. Well, it gives you time to process it, too, and yes, find the answer, find the answer, and you can set a time over right now, I have to find back. And this way, when you go back, when Bernie comes back and says, well, then KB said, because it was verbal, <laughs> I had to go back in. Uh -huh. I said, oh, yes, it was. I'm not going to I would never come back. <laughs> 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 uh, there was something I asked Bernie to put on her Facebook page. And Bernie, what happened? Bernie got an email from National. She handled it quite well. What we were putting on there, the one was thing was okay after Bernie explained to you, but the letter from our national president was not okay. And we were just trying to get the word out. You know, about be the one. We could vote for you. We were all using be the one as a campaign slogan. And we'll be one of the So, but Bernie is smart. She's a teacher. You know, go back and forth. Bernie sent you emails. Karen was sending me emails. Uh, somebody else was sending me emails. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's fine. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to let you know. I'm not sure you let me check into it. Sometimes you don't want to call. I call our National Constitution Bible Sharon. <laughs> I try to remember, say, use your title and not your name. Because Michelle is a personal friend of mine. <coughs> Michelle, call me. So those of you, just for future, for the, at least for the next month, our department president, indeed, husband is very ill, so he's been placed in the hospice at a VA uh -huh. facility. Mm -hmm. It's a roller coaster ride. It has ups and his downs. She had visitation this week in the eighth district. She did visitation coming up next week in the eleventh district. We convinced her at her homecoming last week to postpone that. So Charlotte is stepped up. Charlotte is handing all the emails. So that not the visitation. Not the visitation. Not the visitation. Not the, you know, that to be. Not taking anything away from D. But right now, her mind needs to be with her family. Yes. Yes. And all those of you who have been there, you 
I understand what I'm saying. When your husband is dying, the last thing you want to think about is an auxiliary or anything. Mm -hmm. so, yes? Um, as far as your volunteer hours, how are they reported? Do we, what, what do we do with those? The best way of handling your volunteer hours is at every meeting, have a composition tablet, and you just write in what you did. What did you do? Make a very brief sense of what you did and how many hours you put in. Did you spend any money doing it? Then when we go to do the reports in the month of March, we just go through that book and we figure out where does it go? Is it going to the A&R? Is it going to the community school? And the perfect form would be Reads Across America. Where does Reads Across America go? National Security. That's not where we were going to put it. <laughs> no, it was in.
that we need to know some of that also. So we use the word collectively. Our members did this, did this, did this. It's collectively. Yes. We, Julie, you have to do a uh, district residence report. So we've got three minutes. How many units in the fifth district? Sixteen. Okay, so are you going to have enough time to do every unit? Absolutely not. And if you do, you're going to get digging. Just let me know in the minute. Our district has 21 yeah. units. So what I was do, what I would do is I give the the total amount of hours, the total amount of money. Got that first, mm -hmm. and then a little brief. And then it's in the book of reports. Yep. You can turn in 10 pages to the book of reports, but just make sure that it's because sure the roll, you start mentioning units, you'll get highlighted. You didn't get to me. Well, you're going to be sick. So you say collectively, the units in the 5th district did this, this, and this. But if you had something that was super great, I'd throw that up in the front. Get it out there in the front. But in, when you present your book of reports, you can have all the time you want in the end. Because you only get three minutes. If we gave everybody five and ten minutes, uh, we'd still be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and none of us like big data. We'll live with it. <laughs> Michelle basically talked about constitution and bylaws. Anybody have any questions on constitution and bylaws? Department cannot approve or disapprove. We do not have, currently do not have a constitution and bylaws chairman. She has resigned due to health reasons. So they've been going to the constitution and bylaws email. They've been coming to the secretary's email. I have access to the CMB email, so I'm going to go it. I read them. If I see something that's really off the wall, I send it back. That's why I brought the question about quorum. I said the quorum must be 10. Are you including the unit president in that? Because if you have the quorum must be 10 plus the president, you've got to split both. You know, what do you do? I do not want to cast the time vote. I do not. Because I am going to do things a bit angry. Your bylaws, you know, it, it, that's basically everything that's going on. Your standing rules, as she mentioned, housekeeping. You go in your house and there, anything you can think of that pertains to your unit, put in your standing rules. I don't care if you've got 10 standing rules, um, there's some units out there that got 15, 60 standing rules, but they've covered everything that possibly could happen within yeah. a unit. You know, if you're doing gift baskets, if you're doing raffles, some post homes will not allow two or three fundraisers going on at the same time because you're taking away from somebody. So. <laughs> when you're doing your constitutional bylaws and you're, you are revising them, on your front page, you've got the name of your unit, your location, and always put the words in there revised on such and such a date. So we are trying to get these on to the department website. Unfortunately, they must be as a PDF file attached. One unit decided to stay with the department president and email because their constitution files are not on the website yet. She sent them to me as nine separate pages. I didn't pay attention to the paper JPEGs. I'm not that computer literate, but I'm not afraid of the computer. I said, well, let me see if I get this nice inch of one back to And I call, Randy has to help me, or and has to help me. Maybe you can't because it's a JPEG. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So now, she's <coughs> sending me email this morning. It's a ten, it's a PDF. Thank you so very much. So next week, it will be on the website. The thing with the Constitution and bylaws, for all of you units, I hope that you did send in um, your form stating what your dues for the 24, 25 year will be. So guess what we have to do with that now? We did last year. Now we have to look up every unit's constitution and bylaws to make sure that they change it. If they didn't change it, that means all of next week we'll be sending the emails out to the unit. So that, that's basically what you're standing for. We do it every year, and it's a time-consuming 
it's just 270 units. It's time consuming because some units will put it up in the very top. Some of it very damp, like number 23 of their standing rows, so you've got to read it. Or they'll put it in there. Dues will increase by $3 of whatever national department says, please don't put in $3. Mm -hmm. You're just putting what your dues is going to be. If you're changing your dues and you put in your um, dues per unit, uh, 274 is $35. Effective July 1, 2024, it will increase to $45. That's an easy fix. We can, we can find that. Else in standing rules. Yes, sir, if we do that in standing rules, we would start to submit that form. Mm -hmm. Yes, Fred. Yes. Yeah. And the form states what the dues are going to be. So they're going to give you national's portion, $18, mm -hmm. department's portion, $12. Well, that's $30. Yes. Yeah. So now they want to know how much the unit is going to be keeping up your money. So if you put in $5, that means you do just $35. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all broke. Yeah, so they're broke. They're broke. Yeah, <laughs> there we are. You know, starting 40, 40 should be a nice. I know it's expensive. I understand that. But you need to start it with scratch and have a little bit of Yeah, I just want to make sure if we did it for two years, we still need to start with 40. Mary, yes. should, should the Constitution and bylaws be posted on a bulletin board at the post? You can. Okay, because I was at one of the posts and I saw it and I was surprised. Their dues are $55 from, for auxiliary. Some units are. I mean, some I think not. Some of them late, late, and it was like 50 or $55. But the, the demographics. Right. I mean, they are a, a, I don't want to say rich or they, they have to change more. their. Right, yeah, and then they don't have to change it for many years either. Yeah. Right. But they had it on a bulletin board and I thought that was a really no, cool you, idea. You can't. There's nothing in it. You can't. Okay. Okay. The only thing that I would not post on the bulletin board would be your treasure report. Yeah. You know. uh, that's transparent. Anyway. If, you, if you notice that when you walk out in our book, the Legion one stating the, their constitution yeah. bylaws are on the bulletin And most of them, and most Legion posts will also have their house rules. Yeah. 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 House rules pertaining to the lounge. Pertaining to what should and should not be shared and posted. What about the membership roster? No, no. The membership roster does not get shared. Yeah. The only person who should have a copy of the membership roster is your membership chairman. The membership should be the first class of the membership chairman and your chaplain. Yeah. That's the only one you should have. With our chaplain, the only thing I give them is their address. I don't use the member numbers. I give them their address and their birthday. That's all they need is the address for the Senate and what the birthday is. So we should not share phone numbers? In membership. Of the membership? Well, okay. I mean, if we're a family. So I, and there, here's my line. There, if we're a family. You share, if you packed out all your roster. And well, I'm not saying group, right, confidential things. Right. This group over here has an issue. Well, now they have your email addresses and all of that to contact the other group and start. Stop. We're a family. But <laughs> okay. If you know, you know, you know, because here's my question. Do you have siblings? I do, but the problem is in our particular unit, we've got people that are not being asked or included in things, and they want to be, but other people don't know how to get a hold of them because we don't share the information. Yeah, but so but, how do you combat that? <laughs> but you you did correctly in asking the members if you would like to be on the list for people to call and contact, pass it around Don't share and the roster start a list. Yes. Every member should be able to get in contact with any one of the unit officers. Officers. But you can start a list and say, we would like to have your email address because units are now going more electronic, so they're sending out minutes. And maybe have your phone number and maybe give your phone number out. Now, if you have if you have permission from that person, but just to arbitrarily turn around and say, here you go, a person who's a process. What our unit, 
And what our unit has done is um, we put the collecting like um, collecting email from you know, from the roster, set up where we would email the minutes or email what we want. But what you do is you put the BCC the two and then BCC everyone else. But that's how our unit would get the information out because I have members that are in other states. And they'd be like, well, we can't, you know, we can't participate in this, but can I send you money to help purchase something? Mm -hmm. So that's the way our unit has just kind of shown. And it's the first line is the membership channel is my one fifty five. When I go into LS, I download it into Excel, mm -hmm. I save it, then I go back in there and then I start eliminating the columns. Yeah. Yeah. So with it, and who gets that? I put up the new report. I give that to our secretary. This way, our secretary could be sent our minutes out, you know, electronically. So she's getting. We just don't want all this stuff going out to every time. Right. Yes. Those of you who are um, close to being 62 or over, how many phone calls do you get per day, and it comes up the person's name? I'm like, is this an Indian memo? Is this a oh, no. Then I'm going to want all my manager. I'm soon to be 77. I've been on that for the past 15 years. I have my plan. I'm happy with it. And even though I block them, then they get another phone and they sit close to me. Carly, I want to do burial. Uh, I'm not dead yet. Yeah. And my kids know what to do when I finally come home. The chaplain gets their name and address. The chaplain also should have their member number if they're if they're deceased oh, because right. when they send a form. Yeah, I guess because of our unit, I, because I'm a membership. No, no. 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 When, when I filled out the form as chaplain, out. I had to put their member mm -hmm. number in to send down to um, department. So you're doing a member data form. <coughs> yes, ma'am. There's a difference at that, that point. Subunits will do, secretary will do that. Okay. And the membership channel. Okay. The membership channel, I take care of any of the deceased chain of addresses. It's easier because I'm handling the membership. I, okay. I do the same thing, membership chairman. I make sure the department gets it. I make sure that uh, Ruth Burgess gets it. Because it's just easy. I've got the information right there. I mean, that's just the way I do it. Okay. So okay. The chaplain should be filling now is a short form that goes to the District chaplain? I was district, that's where I and have the And then the other form that goes to the department chaplain. Okay. Because they don't need the numbers. I got it mixed but up. The member data form is something in charge. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. All right. Aurora Saints, uh, fifth district historian. My question is, excuse me, I'm okay. asking a question. I know y'all are talking, but I have a question because I've been looking around and seeing the new ladies and they have this puzzle book and we've said it all day today and I know we keep doing it. We're using acronyms. Alumnus, does anybody know what that is? Yes. So our new members that are coming in, and thank you so much for joining our organization and forgive us because we do acronym everything. But Alumnus is our actual database for our membership and only certain people within the unit have access to it and that's where you get the name address your date of birth your membership number and if you were truly signed up properly and your membership person really really did everything there's all these funky little columns that says who you are if you're married Widow, no. who you're married to. Uh -uh. Some no. of the other oh, things no. that were on no. the no. no. That's not no. now. No. I, I apologize. Yeah. When I did it, I got a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And then it tells for what I had access to. And again, no. I went a little deeper. No. Alamus is that thing that tells us who we are, how we're members, and our personal information. Everyone, please. Thank you. What does Alamus stand for? American Legion. American Legion. Mm -hmm. 
institution. Auxiliary membership. Information system. Thank you. And when they break it down on the national and AOA and AMIA, it was space to write. Yes. So if you look at the hours report, which I can do on my phone, I can do it on my computer. So if you look that out there, you can go in and edit under a member and you can edit it and you will like some of that stuff will be.
those two were one hundred and one. And goes to Queens and goes up to fifty something like that to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a like that. So, in other words, national security is strictly no. strictly uh, military. Are exactly. Okay. Period. Uh, military. Active period. Active duty. Active duty. Well, yeah, I'm saying that. And that could be your reserves and your national guard. Well, yeah. See, that's why I'm saying yeah, it could be those three things. Yeah. So, yes. But it's strictly military Correct. across the board yes. is national security. Thank you for that explanation. Yes. So therefore, anybody else in the community, like you were talking about, everybody else goes under community. So if you're in law enforcement, please, everyone. Your local Thank you. There's a unit in the Sixth District in the Mid Florida Lakes. Every month they give the local fire department a $50 gift card to Publix. Well, they're in the 55 plus mobile home park, but I think the ages are actually more than 90 to 
So what did I do? I immediately went and I downloaded a suggested agenda. When I went to the meeting the next night, I had that agenda with me. I had my gavel. I hit them up, get their attention. I said, this is going to be a GQ meeting. One hit of the gavel means this. Three means this. And then I went down each and every one. It was a GQ moment. I said, I was comfortable doing it. However, because our unit will also ask the representative to the writers for a report. I've never asked for a writer's report. And I'm all finished. And she goes, you should have the writers. I said, they have nothing to do with us. With my answer, they have nothing to do with us. Mm. She says, you put as a courtesy. I'm like, okay. You know. So, you know, Susie Q, can you give us a writer's report? But you, you can take everything you do and make it into a teaching moment. If you're serving you're the president, you get elected in May or June, and you got convention coming up, and you got your chair, you your chairman in place. Take a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, which I know infringes a lot of time, and invite these people or chairman to come to a special roundtable meeting and go through. This book, run this book, and tell exactly what each program is about so they know what they're getting into. Most of them will take it. And it's it's worth it. Are you gonna have all the answers? No. But if I tell you to be the uh, auxiliary emergency fund or AEF chairman, don't you want to know something about it? You know, you, you, you really want to know something about it. If you're gonna be the girl state chairman. You can't take somebody because they're not girl state and make them a girl state chairman. You can, but you better be able to give a good explanation as to what's being done. So that's that, here, that is a great thing to do between convention and workshop. Uh, the president doesn't vote, as Michelle said, unless it's a tie or a ballot. And so if I want to speak on something, I'm going to have the vice president assume the chair. And I'm going to be and I'm going to voice my opinion. I just cannot do <coughs> that until that part is taken. It's like when Michelle said something about, you know, don't get her on the chair. And as the president, I went down to um, Unit 305, down to Treasure Island in that area. Dean Bell was the president. I just thought it stopped in. That made her nervous. And Dee and I have known each other for 26 years. So she tried to do everything perfect. The chair recognizes, the chair does this, the chair does this, the chair does this. I'm just sitting back and I'm like, excuse me, Madam President, what if you say to the chair one more time? Yeah. Right? I says, your department president is going to call her. She's going to pick up the chair and she's going to hit the chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't get nervous because somebody's there visiting. So what do you want to say? Somebody will call you back. It's not like you all have to be honest. We're volunteers. Hey, I had to pass. Department President call me down at our executive meeting last year. Thank you very much, Fran. And I just kept on moving. I'm not going to let her send me. It's, it's not worth it. So, the President does oversee uh, every committee except for the nomination committee. She's the ex officio. She cannot be on the nomination the nominating committee needs to be elected, not appointed. The <laughs> president needs to keep the unit members informed as to what's going on. So if she gets an email from the department membership chairman, from the district chairman, she needs to let the unit members know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, how can we participate? Year end reports, how many unit presidents are here? Show of hands. Okay. Y'all have chairman? You have a chairman for every chair? Oh sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be the perfect world. Wouldn't it though? Hypothetically. So we have a lot of hats. You don't have sixteen or seventeen chairmen for our programs. Yes, you have the president. The unit president. Uh, not if you got it really that second. Third or five. 
Motion followed. We want to spend 15 minutes of discussing no. that. No. Motion passed. Motion failed. That motion passes. Take five minutes. Okay. Y'all have motion followed. Okay. Then you can discuss it. Now you can put in rules for discussion. We've done that department. You can speak once. You may have two or three minutes. You can say how long you can speak. I mean, I if you want to come back and you do a rebuttal, you can be back of the line. Mm -hmm. Got to get you back of the line. And so that's just discussion. When the discussion is ended, then nobody else wants to speak. But if you were at a convention, I think two years ago, someone got up and said, I move that we call for the question. Yes, Mark. In order to do that, we now have to have a motion. I move. No. Somebody has to second it. Then we have to call for a vote, and we have to have a two-thirds vote. Otherwise, we have to keep that line open. Oh. But after a while, you just get tired here, and you know, people are being points out, and all this stuff. Miss Mary, can you really explain in our if a motion is not Seconded, you explain what happens at that point. It's it's and the it's motion is the second it is only to open the discussion. Yeah. It doesn't mean if Nancy seconded that she agrees <coughs> with what she said. She just wants to get the discussion in. Because you don't want to have a minute meeting one in two or three hours. Because if you do, Mary, a question. Who put, like, if you have something you're discussing, who puts a time limit on it? The uh, unit president. Thank you. Okay. Because I thought I did. The chair. <laughs> the chair. Yeah. 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 If, it, if it gets real chaotic, though, the sergeant at arms can speak <coughs> up, correct? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Okay. And with that gavel, when you said somebody can speak up and say, I move, we call for the question. Is that when all discussion stops and it goes to a vote? Provided is that what that means? When you say, I need to be called for the question because it's gotten too long winded. Now that has to be, that's another motion that's on the floor. So I move to, uh, I move to call for the question. Roberta is going to say, I second it. That's not going to be any discussion. It's going to be, is the motion on the floor to end discussion? All in favor, I am opposed to make. But I cannot make that as president. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Somebody has to make them the board. You're there to run the meeting. You can't make the motions unless you want to come off the podium or however you're going to set up and then come out and do it. I wouldn't do it for that. Okay. Um, any questions on secretary? Any and all questions on secretary? So, of course, you love secretaries. Your secretary can be elected <coughs> or appointed. You have to go by what your bylaws say. And so you, can't, you, know, you can't change from year to year. Uh, sometimes it's good to have an elected, but sometimes it's better to have an appointed. Because not that you, know, you can work with. Just remember one thing, if you're recording, remember what you know that you are recording. We do that at conference, and we do that at convention. That's what we have. 
to try to keep them away from. Years ago, we used to hire a school, a court stenographer, to come in and do all that stuff that you have to transcribe. Now we're doing it, you know, to a community recorder that actually will transcribe it for us. You don't get all the words correctly, but we got to keep the images. Yes, we heard it. But if you are recording it, you have to at every meeting say, we are recording yes. this, and if anybody says they have a problem with it, you can't record, yeah. correct? And, I mean, why wouldn't you want to record it? Right, but I mean. Unless you are the proverbial troublemaker. <laughs> 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 well, I, I need to speak of things. And that was one of the reasons I transferred out of the camping unit up to Quinn. I had to travel 90 miles one way to go to me, 90 miles back. When a person asks me, will you make a motion? And they'll second it, sure. They tell me what they want. That right there, I know they're more quiet. Silence. And I'm looking at these people. Those three would not second it. So why did somebody second it? And then they got heated. And for those of you who know me, the Irish New York comes out. <laughs> and after 15 minutes of this discussion, I just remember, Madam President, I will be seeing my motion. And somebody else kind of put my same motion up and it with me, and we were back to me. At that point, I picked up my toys. Good day. And I literally went out into the patio and our first finance officer Andrew was sitting here. And mind you, I had just had a massive heart attack like three months prior and I got smoked. I said, I need a cigarette. <laughs> 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 oh, that's how upset I was. Yeah. And I drove home those 90 miles, not sobbing, <clears throat> but the tears were rolling. My husband said, How did you do this? You wanted things. This is the money that we raised. We wanted to put it in the on. How did you do this? And then I'm like, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. At three units I could go to that were close by. Mm -hmm. Charles is too far away. <laughs> I am. I'm on 55, four and a half miles from my house. I have driven part to 19, roughly 20 miles from my house. And then I had good old lady Lake 347, which would be closer to 30 miles. Do you know how I decided? 347, too many members, you're a number. 219, past the prior president, Diane Russo, very close to the line. I was going to those meetings. They're old. <laughs> and I didn't mean in their years, they're old people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change. I can't. I can't. This is a number. When I went to 55, this is close. And that unit president is petrified of you. <laughs> Your <laughs> reputation. <laughs> yes, it is. So I walked, not my bike. So for a year and a half, I went to the unit and I sat in the back of the room. And then I was doing this, I was doing that. The unit president looked at me and I you know, I would just start giving her high signs. And then only once, I mean, I was mad at the president, and I approached the podium. And it's working. So I'm here now, a little over two years. I'm getting to know the members. I'm doing things. I'm spending money that we don't have. We can't do this. And I have a treasure on my side. Because we haven't had members who only show up once a year because they want to do a mission. We don't have $1,500 to give her for her cause. Right. Yeah. I said, I'll make a motion. $100. And the church will finish them. So when it came out, I had a new business, and the president, I knew that he did that about $100. Church will be second. Very quick discussion because they knew we don't have the money. We gave too much money away last year. You cannot start your year out with $1,000. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Depends on your quotas. I mean, our, our quotas are over $700. We have, we have 264 members mm -hmm. on, on the book. <laughs> so, it, it, ours, ours, oh, what are we doing? <laughs> okay. We have units out there that got $50,000, $60,000, $80,000. Mm -hmm. And then I look at the donation report and I'm going, you need a dollar to each thing, but then you've got $60,000 sitting there. How are you raising this money? You're going to 
as you know, I'm going to say that. Okay. So, finances. How many treasurers are here? Do you like your job?
if you received a letter from the Department of Agriculture saying that you don't need to do it, I hold on to that letter. Because <laughs> that letter is gold. You can dip it in gold so nothing happens to it. They give you the amounts. If it's under, I think, $25,000, you don't have to worry about it. But if it's $25,000 to 49999 cents, it may be something else. But those are required. Your 990, when you file your 990, just because you get a thing that says it's been filed, you have to make sure you get where it's been accepted. Julie, have you had any problems with any of the units when they file their 990s? Yes. Yeah. There's only so much that we can do to help you with that. There's also, there's a, when you file your 990, some units can do the postcard thing. Some units can't. It's because of the money that they have. And to exactly. And uh, that question was asked. I don't remember where. But somebody had asked me about it. And it depends on the amount of money that your right. unit brings in. Yes. And on the postcard, you get that, okay, it's accepted, you're good, or whatever. Once they say it's accepted. But on the, on the long form, we never get anything saying that. Well, again, it goes by how much money you have coming in. So if you're doing all kinds of fundraising and you're raising hundreds of thousands of dollars, you have to be careful with that because we are a file that's expensive. So if you, your EIN number must be registered under the unit's name. You cannot use the first EIN number that is illegal. Right. And you get caught up in that somewhere along the line. Yep. It happens. And then you can need to get your EIN number reinstated. It can cost you over six hundred dollars mm. because every year the department secretary will receive a list from national, and we call it the bad list. Mm. Because it's going to have all the information, and it's going to say that uh, you no longer have a nonprofit status. Mm. You know, you're not a five hundred one c nineteen, but you're a three, four, or five. So you. You may have to pay taxes, and they are a nonprofit organization, so you have to really pay attention to that. Okay. If you uh, if you have to get your EIN number reinstated, and you're going to get a letter of determination from the IRS saying yes, this is your number, everything is fine. But once you get that letter, now you have to notify the national with a letter of inclusion. Mm -hmm. Those forms can be found on the department website under the forms and resources. You go to treasurers. There's a treasurer's guide, and it's one of the last pages in there. This is the information is out there. So how many of you use a laptop at home? Excuse me. This is the best way of getting information. Charlotte doesn't leave home without it. This, this is like a American Express card. Go, go. Yeah. Every place she goes, she has her laptop. But I'll open her eyes. Right, yes, it's there. Mm -hmm. I can do a lot on the phone, but I cannot get into Constitution and my life on the phone, and I can do it with all this. Mm -hmm. So everything is here. If you have a smartphone, an iPhone, whatever kind of phone, you can go on national website. The information is there. We cannot make it any simpler. Mm -hmm. But you have to want to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to want to learn. Here. Yes. I have a question. Just just for clarification. Once you get your nonprofit status approved, you know, here you say if you fundraise under twenty five thousand dollars, you don't need the solicitation letter. If anything over, you do need it? No. No. You don't have to pay for it. I'm sorry. You still have to buy it, but you don't have to pay for it. In other words, there's a fee if you make over twenty-five thousand. I don't remember what that is. Most of it's ten dollars. You got? Yeah. I have it. Yeah. If it's only ten dollars, come on, cost that ten dollars. Pay it. It's worth it. Yeah. Because when I mean, solicitation is not that you're just going around for fundraisers, you're also soliciting <clears throat> membership. You're out doing yeah. poppies. We're not selling poppies. What are we doing? We're distributing poppies. Mm -hmm. But well, then you've got a can, you know, do you shove it in your face? Like, no, but you have a can visible. Yeah. And then you have your little juniors with their cute little eyes walking around. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we don't sell poppies. We distribute poppies. If they want to give you 
two cents? Two cents is two cents. If they want to give me a dollar, fine. You know, you can say, would you like to donate? But if they don't want to donate, don't force them to. I done it, and I seen you the Vietnam veterans um, baseball cap on. Would you wear a company in honor of our fallen? No, I don't need that crap. Okay. But maybe he's had a bad day. Who knows? It's not up to me how I'm going to think. When I was out in California, oh my God, 37 years old, visiting my son because he was at Fort Worth. He's enlisted. He didn't know money. I love he got a couple of dollars. I said, I the same thing when you got your money. <laughs> because they had to tell me he's had one of the copies. And they had an older veteran out there get out in World War II or maybe Korean War. Yeah, I know you can go on SunBiz to check and make sure that your certificate of um, nonprofit is accepted. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a website you can go on regarding the solicitation? Yes. 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 Okay. It's FDA it's the So you, you know for sure yes. whether. And you can yes. search. I might be not go. But can you find it under your, uh, the TIN? Yeah, 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 ye
I just don't remember I numbers. Remember here, if you're in a good district, you do need help. And then mom is more willing to sit down. She's done it with a couple of folks here as opposed to met up and all those. So just remember, we are this much different than the region. You know, I'm saying this much different. So, okay, and that's fine.
check what the government says, this is how much money you have. And not a penny more. You know, it's easy. I, again, you need 55 dollars. Thank you. 
instead of waiting until the end of the year to try to do a whole year's worth of all energy, especially for a busy unit. Okay. Uh, the chaplain. The chaplain opens and closes the meeting with a prayer. She sends out maybe a few cards, sympathy cards. Um, if you're a customer, if you're a student, we'll say that the chaplain will send a, a plant or flowers up to X amount of dollars to some that's in the hospital. And I've seen some, you have to be in the hospital three days a week and you get flowers and you only get them once. Well, when you're in the hospital, and then you go home to the garden hospital, you get two flowers. You know what those things are. So, uh, she's up in the spiritual group of the unit. Stop and Always non denominational. Now, if you make a statement before and say, um, you know, someone's um, has given a prayer, and if it's of the Catholic faith, you're telling it right up front. Very simple. It's okay. But you have to do that for everybody. And if you stop and think how many different faiths you can, go to any given point, there's some kind of church probably not. You know, we believe in a supreme being, whether he's male, female, a cow, a horse, a kid, is what your beliefs are. I'm an Irish Catholic girl. No. Who am I going to believe in? I'm going to believe in the saints or the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph. You know, I question things, but you know, that's only from 12 years of having that you know, down. If you can, as a chaplain, she attend celebrations of life, memorials, funerals, and visit the sick. With COVID, I attend a car before I would go visit. Unless you know that they're just, you know, maybe you're going to surgery or something like that. You, know, you have to make sure you take care of your health issues. Uh, you take care of notifying your district and the department of a deceased member with small forms. Not the member down the phone, she would do the secretary's job. Anything that's administrative should fall on the secretary. But if the unit wants to, if the unit chaplain wants to do that member down the phone, I'm not going to argue with them. Now, it's not a secretary when I do it, just because I'm not a secretary. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier. And then I also go ahead and send it to you because I've got it right here and I give my chaplain a copy of it. And she makes sure that she sends the sympathy card. of everyone sitting around. Um, ultimately, tell what you're doing also, because I see it all the time in PR and on Facebook, on unit Facebooks, you'll get, tw you'll upload 20 pictures, but say nothing about it. 
You won't say what was the purpose of your dinner function or your fundraiser or why you were crocheting those hats or why you know you were passing out meals at this. Or who were you supporting? What was the purpose of what your volunteerism was about? So I always say, tell your story. The public relations part is you want to you want more than you want you're publicizing events. But when it comes to history, a lot of the stuff that you're saying again, you know, it's really into the uh, I still want to call it the community, okay? Into the Liberty Bell. It's great, but when we're getting paragraphs of the story, that's part of your history. It's something that's already passed. So please don't be mad at me. Presentation of food. <laughs> they were doing a wedding reception at one of their members who was this big table of food, okay? <laughs> what else is going on? But now, if you're doing an event there and you're honoring, such as today, you know, you're doing here, that is an event. Mm -hmm. I put that in there. I would definitely put that in there. Mm -hmm. so, this is something that we've done. You know, you're, you're sharing that. But listen, you're just going to say it's. It's a 50-50 deal to start with me. And I'm sorry that we can only take five pictures. But with 207 units and with you that community in color, you have no idea of what the cost is. Oh, yeah. That's why we're trying to do everything. Plus the copy machine, we have to do it. We're basically putting that copy machine also all night long. We have to do it. Time to change, and I'll accept the change. And I want to go with the color because I think you might have to. Sergeant in arms. Any sergeant in arms in the room? Uh, I don't know. No, 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 no,
know she didn't have to go through all this, but he was being very demanding. He said, keep peace. <laughs> I'll see you. And I'll bring them down with the story. But then afterwards, he was a, a personal friend of mine. You know, Bill, we are not required to. But if, you know, we will. If you drop my arm, because you got me on your right, I will see with the flag out of respect to the flag. Not to you, Bill, no. but to the flag. I always used to ask the person I was escorting, oh, do you want to salute? So I know whether to stop or not. Are you a dual member? Yeah. That's it. Aurora, she's a dual member. Right. right? So when you're escorting her up, if she's there for an auxiliary function, you can still ask her, did you like to? Go to the flag, and she goes to the flag. She did not commit a mortal sin. I've seen it at national conventions where the American flag is front facing, it's going to be to the left, but there's no staircase to come up on that side. So everybody's coming up on that, that side of the stage. It's not a big deal. The easiest way to get around that.
to the president. Does she have to follow your advice? No. no. But she never know what she's saying. These are different things that we've done. Then we start finding things, and then I go through the book where I don't have the, I start highlighting stuff. Um, COVID. Well, we finally got that cabinet intervention, and we did not get our um, amendments out in time because we had a time span. I went searching, and I found a hole. It's suspending the hole. <laughs> Don't they get a um, copy of the agenda when they start off? So they kind of know sure. the, how the, the meeting's going to flood. But I can guarantee you, not every president has an agenda which he's going to speak on. If the unit president cannot make the meeting out of the courtesy, she should be the vice president when her agenda is. That's what she's speaking on. Mm -hmm. I knew to follow a suggested agenda, but maybe there seems to be one that they're not announced that they need to be made. Somebody needs to know that information. You're planning on going to meeting next Thursday, but on Tuesday, something happens, something drastic happens. You can't make it. Get on the phone immediately with the vice, the first vice president. Cannot make the meeting on an email machine. Don't let them walk in your blind. We are, we are, we are, every, we pass out the agenda. But then at the beginning, the president has to. Permission to deviate, and mm -hmm. in case something else comes up, it's not on the agenda. But it also helps keep everybody on track. Okay, this is what I mean. You forgot to mention this. But, so, yeah. when I, my first vice had to do a meeting, my agenda, my my copy of the agenda actually had every, when do you get the wrap, da 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 da, every little right. square. Yeah. When she got out there, other than me, other than not being me, she went straight off the agenda and she went step by step and it, she said it made her it made her life so much easier. It does. Because she knew exactly what was, where she was and everything. Now um, even though you have an agenda, okay, but you know what I mean, you want to discuss, you may have it all typed up or whatever else. When it comes down to business, old business, new business, don't tell the member, I'm sorry, we can't bring that this is not on my agenda. That member has that right to bring something. Yeah, there are many yeah. presidents out there that say, nope, you didn't notify me in time. That's why you ask if there's any other business that comes before the second. And that's why we always look at the permission to deviate from the right. first of the second. You never know, you know. So, I mean, you get that um, welcome to the board the brief. It's a much senior book. It's a paperback. It's easy to follow. When you go looking for something, like I was looking at corn, you got to come in That's QR. Corn. There's probably about 25 different things on corn. So it tells you to go to section 1, 8. Then you go to section 3, which is uh, three, uh, chapter 3, which is section 3 and 5. Then you go to 40, chapter 1. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So you have to know what you're looking for. So how do you know what you're looking for? They have condensed versions. We're yeah. not, your unit is not a multi-million dollar corporation. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's yeah. Easy <laughs> Electronic copy, you can search real easy too. Yes. 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 But when you search for something in the rubber tools and you get things, pay 
attention to the state because it will come up in different states and every state runs it. That also goes along with your Department of Ag, your um, Sundays, you have to provide what your state says. Because trust me, what Florida does, the state of New York says the same thing. <coughs> Thank you. 
something didn't work way back in 1957. It won't work until 2024. You know, you just have to put a different spin on things. You know, don't be afraid to try anything. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, well, at least you try. Create a culture of goodwill. So how do you do that? Oh, I know. I'm being the president, and all I do is mumble. I just hate this girl. It's a great thing with the piercing. I don't want to do it. I have to go to the room. Do you think someone's going to step up? No. You can't go over as a president. You can't But you can't get up here either as a member. You know, be polite. You know, it may kill us. <laughs> you know, it may kill us at times to be polite, but you can. Tell the times it's count to ten and choose. Don't roll your eyes. Oh, I can't see. Oh, now you're getting it. I'm in Michelle's house about a month ago. And Michelle asked something, and Charlotte answered her, and Michelle immediately rolled her eyes, and what was your response? Can you tell me it's my ear? So why are you rolling your eyes at my suggestion? <laughs> don't, don't talk with your face. <laughs> so Michelle, look at Michelle. <laughs> You know, you're entitled to your opinion. You are. And by all means, allow them to have your opinion. Just don't let it go on to the whole meeting and argue and stuff like that. Uh, you remember, don't be afraid to ask a question during the meeting. Raise your hand. And if you're a good president, you will acknowledge that person. If you keep ignoring that person, then you're not good. Is everybody has the right to speak. Okay. Be respectful. That's no different than Nanny Nancy. Is Janet Mansion or I got gone? Would you go into church and be disrespectful? No, because that lightning bolt's going to come down and get you. <laughs> you know, so just be respectful. Attend district functions and events if you can. Does it mean you have to attend every event because there's something going on in every unit that can be cost prohibitive? But if it's a district meeting, attend it, especially if you're the unit president. Mm -hmm. How else can you get the information back to your unit members unless you go and get it first hand? Mm -hmm. Once you start getting it second, third, and fourth hand, Julie, how many times do you ask them, yeah, but this is what was said, and then so-and-so changed it to this, and to this, and to this, and to this. If you're going to repeat it, repeat it perfectly. Verbatim. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't keep your opinion on it. Okay. Um, new units. Do you anticipate any new units coming in the fifth district? So there's been talk, but they're struggling getting and people to set up. So yeah, nothing yet. So no. Well, there's a form if you want to start a new unit. There is a form that you can get from the national website. There's information on how to charter a unit. If you're not too sure, at that point, please call. So I do have a question. So like Cam said, 37, you know, turn the charter in. <laughs> I lived through that. Um, back several years ago, if they want to re- open for the auxiliary because the legion's back, the vibes are back down there. Is that a whole brand new process, a new charter, new everything? The problem is nobody wants to step up and be officers. They can't no, get a president. They can't get any of that. Right. And that's, don't, yep. And don't, don't, don't. Yep. Nope. That's where don't we're we're in. In. Yep. That's why, that's why the answer is no right now because nobody's okay. wanting to. But it is considered a recharter. They can get a new charter. But it is, it's simple, it's simple to do. Yeah. It is simple to do. Um, but when you fill out the form for the new charter, if you have an old typewriter, that would help. <laughs> if you don't have good printing, get somebody who can print. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but we just got in a, a new charter, and I'm telling you, I cannot read both of those names. Thank God they had their membership number because they were all coming out of 400. So that we can go ahead and look up their name. So that's a whole new charter. And when you're rechartering the unit, there's more steps involved once the charter comes in, and that's where it's getting their EIN number back into place. So
synopsis that could possibly happen okay. within your unit. Okay. You want the meat? It's you want the meat? Yes. The mm-hmm. Yes. And, and I, I felt that it, it may not have happened last year, but the two times I have been uh, I mean, yeah, sure I'm going to use leadership. Leadership really is not a program. Leadership really is not a program. Correct. Okay. Uh, when you look at national and broken down Leadership is the finance of it, but we don't see actual committees. Leadership is just a way of learning, teaching, mentoring, you know, being a, a good leader, expressing things so yes. that things go slowly. Your program, you know, ain't yet really isn't a program either. No. When you think about it, yeah. but we will say this is what you can do to raise money for ADF. You know, well. there's a difference. Truthfully, in youth, it's a program, it's a baby. Yes. That is a very realization, it's a baby. You know, there's a lot of things that can be covered under the baby Public relations, is that really for our uh, yeah. Public relations, is that really a program? You know, but, but if you don't shoot your horn, 
Exactly. Nobody knows who's going to be anything. We are going to embarrass our grandma on that. She is an excellent national reading survey agent. That's cool. You know, and not only is national heritage in the long run, and that was the purpose of the Department of Law and having Facebook pages of every program so the information can be given out. If you want to update something, we have a newsletter that goes out every month. Every department chairman can put something in there every month if they want. They are required to put an X amount of articles. They're giving them up. They're giving them up to you. If you want to put something in every month, go for it. District presidents. We may ask district presidents to start putting in an article. Just what's going on in the neighborhood, so to speak. Um, okay. Also, the suggestion um, that some and I just want to get it out there to see. Um, Zoom meetings. Some of our department chairmen do either monthly or quarterly Zoom meetings. Would you like to see more of our department chairmen doing these Zoom meetings? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know. I, I, <laughs> is it too much work? <laughs> and then just, you know, so that your unit, um, unit, um, Chairman for all these children in you, or your district chairman for children who at least can sit on there and see what's coming up and what's new to pass it on, not that any other one Yes, ma'am. I've, I've sat in on the children and youth and have learned a lot. And you can do it from your home, you can do it in your pajamas, and you can gather information. And I think they're great. I really, really do. Because they're sharing with anyone who wants to log on. And if they're giving us that tool, and all we have to do is join in for an hour a month, it's it's time well spent. I personally haven't sat in uh, the two chairmen that are doing it now, but I did sit on it last year, and I think it was Linda Nautilus Harkness's. Uh, Linda was doing yeah, national security. Yeah, she was doing national security. security. Yeah. And I want, and I had logged in just curiosity, but I mean, it was really good. Yeah. And they had a special speaker from one of the, the bases, and I was like blown away. So I did enjoy, but sadly this year my scheduling has not permitted me to join. And, and you're correct. Yeah. I, mean, I stayed Charlotte and emailed you saying, I'm going to see you today. I said, what I'm doing talk about you today. Oh, yes, yeah. See, yeah. so, yeah, so, I'm going to talk about you today. You take one to the team again, she goes, of course. <laughs> well, then she sent me a text later on, she says, that means it's tomorrow night. And actually, it wasn't a Zoom meeting for me. Yeah. It was a Zoom meeting for President McGee. Yeah. But I get, as the secretary, I get notified when there's national Zoom meetings. Not all the time. Right. But I had a Zoom meeting at 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon and the other one 7.30 that night. And there's some of you that you should try some of these such a time. So it's not a big thing. They're informative. Yeah. National does one, they call it Lunch and Learn, and it's mainly for uh, the department membership uh, coordinator and the department secretary. And I found it really informative. I found stuff that our national secretaries need to be informative. They have to be informative. Yeah. Even if it was quarterly, not monthly. It wouldn't, you know, it's like when you know, oh my God, I'm going to zoom But even if it was quarterly, at least to get some of the stuff out there or reminders of what's coming up in the next month. You know, don't forget, you know, whatever. Our family, we've got the American Museum Family Day. And so, you know, this is coming up where it falls under. Um, <coughs> and um, ask questions. But that's when, you know, these are things, ideas. That and you can get from us to yeah. see how you want that to done. Zoom does cost you. You can get 45 minutes for free. Okay, that's what I was going to ask because I know that National, they will upload the videos so you can watch them later. So, but that would take probably take money from Florida to have to do something like that. Uh, we're checking into it, right? Okay, now. yeah. Cause we're, we're checking into doing things where it means putting them on YouTube. Uh huh. You know, I mean, actually, if it costs us a little bit of money, it's money well spent. Oh, absolutely. Money well spent. Um, there's things that, you know, we took off of the uh, difference between uh, VA and our national security. That's awesome. Well, I'm doing one thing, you know, I'm doing one thing on the phone, and I'm then, I got it on my laptop. Heck with this. I started using my phone, and I'll stop snapping the slides. But then they sent out and said, they didn't pull that onto us. So it's, it's informative. You know? Yes. It's, it's from the uh, AOA Academy. What are you going to do for that? I mean, this way, why did you do this organization? That's how you have to look at it. 
by the way, for the people that are here, um, we actually do already have a YouTube channel, our fifth district does, and I do upload all the recordings of conference, conventions, summit sessions, uh, military child table ceremonies, everything I can is there, and I'll send you, I'll put out the link again, but we do, we do, do have yeah, that. I mean, I hear people say, well, I'm not on Facebook. Well, it's okay, you don't have to do But you can get on Facebook just to get on to those pages. Leadership is a private page. You can get the release, you can get other pages are public. You can want to get the word out, but then the only problem with your public page is you don't know who's trying to join it. And leadership, you have people from different countries, and I, I can't even pronounce their name on the Thank you. 
Purchase more poppies or poppy supplies. Or... And by the poppy pocket. The initial mm -hmm. answer. And this was in accordance with the American Agent Poppy Program and Poppy 
one rules, as revised in 2013 and 2014 by the American Legion National Executive Committee. American Legion, not the only Poppy funds may only be used for the rehabilitation of veterans honorably discharged from the United States Armed Forces after April 6, 1917. The welfare of the families of veterans of the above name period. The rehabilitation of hospitalized military service personnel returning home and awaiting discharge who require treatment in service hospitals. The welfare of veterans, here's the difference, active military personnel and the families of veterans in active duty, active military personnel of the above name period where financial and medical assistance is evident. For the purpose of poppy kits and supplies, used to make the symbolic poppies and poppy items that will be distributed for donations to the poppy farm. Now, we in the Department of Florida, no unit can order poppy kits from national, because that's in our Department of Constitution and Bylaws. We have shortage of poppies, a huge shortage of poppies, and we end up getting 100,000 poppies from another department, which costs us quite a bit of money. More than what we would have paid, because we don't have any of the any poppy makers. But we're working on it. You know, so up until next Thursday, if the union has done all the poppies for distribution in May, you need to get in by next Thursday, otherwise you won't get any poppies from it. And that's the way we have them. And that's the way we have them. Unless what? Provided that now. We have that some left. So provided that we have some. If you're if you're a small unit, uh, under a hundred, please don't order fifteen thousand copies. Okay. Okay. Order what you can. You can distribute. Please don't order them to Florida. And you have thirty days. From your copy distribution date to uh, send in 25% of the proceeds. If you're typically, copies are for Memorial Day. Not Veterans Day, not July 4th, not September 11th, if they were done for, to honor those who took their lives. So it's Memorial Day. Right. So now you have. The Friday of Memorial Day weekend is National Poppy Day. Yes. So some units are getting in for that Friday, but that's all they wanted them for, but then they're out there distributing them on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and they only ask for Friday. So if you can have copies, you say for the Memorial Day weekend starting Friday and ending Monday, and you go to the whole weekend. I know it's hard to get people to volunteer to come out and do copies. I know, I understand that. Then you're done that. But just do the best that you can. And if you can't, you can always put poppy cans out in the lounge. You can put poppy cans out in the past and have around. Um, but there, there's a lot of discussion over the paper poppy versus being a flower versus something else versus a poppy that's sort of a different color. That's the only national that you can find that on the national website under the poppy guide. It gives you all the information you need about poppies. Mia, did you have a question? Where do you, where is your auxiliary pin when you have a corsage? Corsage. So where do you think your auxiliary pin would go if you had a corsage on? You know to wear your corsage on the left side, so where would your pin go? Over it. Because I mean, can't I mean, nothing be over the pin or the logo? So, so she's saying the corsage so here and then put so it up. So the corsage is up here on the shoulder. Where would your pin be? Uh, here. Get a wrist corsage. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Checking your chest out, but my heart be 
until they hear. How do I know that? Because I'm constantly listening to them. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> so the identity of pain on the left side. You know, somewhere around the collar, you know, if you wear your pain kind of just like right after you wear it, you're okay. Should the corsage go above it? No, no, no. You know, the flag can go above it. So if you put your corsage on the right hand side, you could. And then you put your name tag underneath it. So when we put the name tag on the right hand side, people say, no, belongs on the left. Wherever you put it is fine, there is no rule. But if you think about it, whether you're right handed or left handed, when you walk up to a person, I don't understand if you're left handed, I don't understand my left hand out to you because it would be awkward. My right hand automatically comes out. And if that person is left handed, their right hand comes out too, because they will shake with their right hand. Mm -hmm. So you just get to see Without it. Without your shaking hands, you get to see yeah, it. I see it. Yeah. If I buy Jane Hardy, I put this here. I'm only five foot two. Jane says, mm -hmm. okay, why Jane? She said, you almost like this. You're tall. <laughs> so if you have to jump your eyes to see my name, you know that that's okay. So you know, you just, you know, put it. Should you be walking around with 40,000 pins on you? No, no. I have a little bag and I've got, this is a secretary one. Um, I used to have one for AKC instructor. I can't find that. I got an old national one. I got one when I was a president. I got a unit one and I got a district one. How many eight badges can we use? One at a time. time. One at a time. Yeah. Exactly. Because Michelle is a national chairman. Jane is a national officer. What did they wear? They wore this regular department name tag because that's what they're here for. Who okay. mm -hmm. else has a question? I have a really hard one. I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure. What number is it? 39. Okay. Is the spouse of a non serviceman eligible for membership? on the war service of a former husband who died either during the war or following discharge. Okay. My thought on it would be that her husband died. If she had joined while he was still alive and actively serving, I think it would be okay. But now that she's married to someone else and that is her spouse and he was not service, I don't know that she can. Yes, she can. Yes, she can. If she is a widow, not if she is divorced. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's the key is widows. Yes. Okay. It says, the fact mm -hmm. that the widow of a service man remarried does not deprive them to the right to belong to the auxiliary. Under these circumstances, the spouse of a non-service man is eligible for membership in the auxiliary if their former, if their former husband, she didn't say husband anymore, their former spouse, was an ex-service person and died either during the war or following their discharge, and a spouse who was a widow of an ex-service person and later remarried a person who is not an ex-service person would be eligible for them. So yes, they are. Okay, thank now, you. If they were divorced, that would be another story. Thank you. Be different. That was a good question. Yeah. Yes. And so, I can tell you last Wednesday, uh, Patsy got a phone call from someplace in the first district. And this brother, and then his keyword brother wanted to join the auxiliary. And has to tell him that he cannot. Yes, I can, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. So Patsy had called him back and she said, I need to see that paperwork. And yeah, he had a sheet of paper on the top of the paper, not letter and paper, just there. It's a paper like this. Mm -hmm. Changes in the American Asian Auxiliary 02.02.2024. Yeah. Okay. And it is all this information. Where did he get this from? So I knew when they brought the spouses in of female veterans, my impression was your spouse can join because he or she is not eligible. Right. She goes, well, they, uh, we're not eligible to join anything, but I'm a female veteran, I'm a male spouse or a female spouse, so she can join, or they can join the auxiliary. That was my conception that made sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I see, uh, I'm gonna pick on Jerry and Warren Grant, who, let's just say, Jerry is a legionnaire. We know Juan is a young member, but 
Wanda, eh, I'm going to take on Aurora better. This is better. Because <laughs> <laughs> you fall into it. It is. You fall into it. Go with it. So she's an engineer. But her spouse was not. And not eligible as a son. So yes, you can turn down as well. Oh, but well, wait a minute. Her spouse is actually an engineer. Why should you be allowed to join the young story? It didn't make sense to me, and it still doesn't make sense to me. And that was the people in there who were not eligible. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's where my mind goes. Well, that was our question first when we heard that. That was our question yeah. first when we heard but, that. But that didn't you say brother? This guy was a brother. So he was saying that brothers, fathers, uncles. Mm -hmm. No, grandsons can join on the school. No. So when I called Michelle, I'm going, is there something going on? Because I knew they were having this big Zoom meeting today a couple of ago. Is there something going on that I need to know? So she's what did you get? And I tell her, she says, nah, that's a bunch of, yeah, okay. I also called Jane. And I also spoke to the national secretary. Somebody just typed up something on the man who's trying to pull it off. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So the only way my brothers can join and can't join me up, cannot join me on certainly unless their spouse is a veteran. However, they can join the sons. Right. Like, yep. Okay, they can because, you know, our father was, our dad um, was in the service. Yeah. Okay. Your dad, you know, my dad and my sons, your dad, my older son served this country. He's a legionnaire. His sons can join with the sons of the American Legion. His grandsons can join the sons of the American Legion. His granddaughters can join the auxiliary. What, can my great granddaughters join the auxiliary? No, no. I have a question about that. Um, so, if a son is a son, he, he's part of the sons, and that person passes away, does his then now widowed spite, spouse get to stay in the auxiliary as long as he needs her to leave? Nope. As long as she pays her dues. Once she don't pay her dues, yeah, because yeah, then, then you have to go. And now you can say that you have to have the course. And you, if you got divorced, uh -huh. and you joined under your uh, dead husband, uh -huh. you can stay on a willing member as long uh -huh. as long as you pay your dues. I Once you dues. let your dues last and no longer become a we, I had that happen. A, a, a girl I was contacted, she was trying to join under her ex-husband, and she had lapsed in her membership. So I told her she needs uh, another application. And you had to have that And she said, well, he's my, and I said, no. I said, because she said husband at first, but I had already had to right. notify that it was the next husband. Yeah. So knowing that information, I had to request it. And it turned out he was just on the way to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, granddaughters can join, but can great-granddaughters join. My great granddaughters are members. They I say, I'll get it first. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Now, what we do is, when we sign them up, we sign them up under their great grandfather. We did not sign up under their grandfather. Okay. Uh, their great grandfather was deceased, and was one year later on. And now, they're my great granddaughters. I pay their dues. They live in Alabama. They're Florida members. Should I lapse in paying their dues when they join back again? No. no. Yes, they can. Because they're my son's granddaughter. Ah, there's the connection. There's the connection. That's why he's a senior. She's a senior, yes. So all the son you know, you can get that first. And I told my son, you're going to take 18. And after that, they're on that. My two grandkids are Thank you.
I do. We already discussed it. My question is number 60. Is it required for an ALA member to stop and render a hand salute to the flag when approaching the podium? <laughs> I'm ready to answer this. Okay, I've got 76. How long must you be a member before you can run for an office? What do you think? You need to be. No, not that there's no Unless it's in your standing rules. No. Um, nope. I mean, nope. but I, I was in an organization where we put that in your standing rules that you had to attend. Well, but I'm, I'm talking about another organization. That way they kind of knew what was going on rather than just walking in. But obviously the answer is I can come to a meeting one month and become an officer the next month. Exactly. I'm not that going to. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I don't even have to You're voluntold. <laughs> you went to the back and you come back and then and you're on the If the post to which an auxiliary unit is attached changes its name, location, or number, is it mandatory that the unit take the same action? Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> I have yes. been there and done that. Yes. <laughs> Nancy, can I read the question? Yeah, I, I missed it. I'm sorry. Yes. sorry. Because uh, our post burnt down. So we changed locations, and at the same time, we changed the name of our post from the Saucier to Kelly J. Mixon. And people in National had a hard time trying to get me for, to help me to get our IRS straightened out. Yes. It took uh, about a year and a half. But the that. you kept the number, right? Yeah. Nine stay, you just changed the name? Changed the address and the name. But yes. nine stay? Yes. Okay. So if they change it, um, then I named it, you know, the National Humane Living Person. Living person. You know, it's it, it wasn't. No, it was not It was originally in 186. They were originally in the spring. Yeah, yeah. So they were down here, yeah, and then the area in the area. Highway Bridge, unfortunately, has Walmart. This side of it is Brooksville, that side of it is Spring Hill. Right. So when they originally had the post, it was over on that side, so they called it Spring Hill, 186. Then they come over to this side, and they decide to change the name to Charles E. Murray, American Legion Post, 186. So once that got changed, then the officer had to go in and change all of their stuff. They got to keep their EIN. Right, yes, it, it was just the name change, it was just, 
the IRS was the one that was because it took forever to find the person who to talk to at National that said, oh, I know what you're talking about. Here we go. Right. <laughs> so anybody else have questions for you? I just want to say one thing on the meetings is um, I didn't have as much of a problem with the workshop as I have with conference because there's so much divide and conquer. Hard to get as much in. You're right. We're, we're getting 45 minutes. I know. But in the meantime, we only have a distinguished guest. I know. I mean, workshop, so workshop has to work. Yes, and the thing with workshop is the department chairman should not be rushing through because they want to live down to uh, 04 endorsements, 83, 10, 10, or 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have to go later, we have to go later. Mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's just, we're trying to get the more training out there. So yeah. Yeah. I think workshops. I would say more if I had to choose, I'd send more people to workshop than conference. Workshop, maybe you should go you can start at one o'clock on Saturday afternoon and you finish up at twelve o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can one one break the day for lunch. Five thirty to seven and you go back from seven o'clock to ten o'clock at night and you reach home to the department headquarters. And then we come back Sunday morning and finish it up. Trying to get it all done. I may not like the meet and greet on Friday night. I think it's a waste of time. I don't see yes. Especially this billboard. But it's not my right year. I know. Can we get rid of this? But the good thing about the workshops that I think happened first with Jane is that we had tables right. that we could write yes. <laughs> and notes on. Yes. Then okay, doing our. Yeah. I hate sitting somewhere where I'm trying to take notes and I'm just in the chair. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I like, instead of round tables, right. I like long tables. Yes. Because you get yes. our table. Well, I don't have a tendency more to start talking to your mm -hmm. to your Correct. Yeah. 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 More I people than just your right and left. And, you know, <laughs> when we come to workshop, I know we all have our juniors. We all have our friends. We all want to see together. Go sit someplace else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So right. many well, I, I noticed when Jane had it, she had everybody go to different oh, spots so you get yes. to know uh, different. When Maureen Costello was coming in as the president, I was her uh, membership chair and we went to Indiana. I sat with her through one session. The next session, I had to move to another table. Next session, to another table. So you got to see with more people. Yeah. And you got to know more people.